is um internet has been really really bad in singapore or no no sorry rephrase that internet has been awful with star hub star hub i think on wednesday that a major breakdown on their dns server or something like that and it was like the whole afternoon until at night that i couldn't get online like i couldn't use the internet it was terrible then when i did my live stream on wednesday i had to use my phone like my the internet on my phone i had hot spot so good morning everybody good morning chala i am having coffee i'm not having my celery juice be hi me hello not having my celery juice because i drank my i drank my celery juice yesterday and i'm doing like alternate days of juicing because juicing is expensive i can't be buying so many oranges and fruits and you know? <laughs> so i decided i'll do one day no juice one day juice one day no juice one day juice good morning jj christina serena clara morning so i'm having coffee i'm having my usual check up check up <laughs> i am trying to look for a two in one version because this is less sweet though it's not really less sweet it's kind of sweet i can taste the sugar like that after taste of sugar you know that the tongue is like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah i'm trying to look for like two in one so i can't find that oh morning everybody esther mabel can you guys hear me okay because um i am not sure if the mic is picking up this side or i'm using the other mic i don't know i don't know i don't know what's the setup <laughs> i hope it's this setup let's see should be yeah good clear all right good 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 okay so as usual i am just gonna get ready and chit chat so today i was thinking of telling you guys the toll staying at home has taken on me on my wallet actually <laughs> I have been really good, you know, I think in my last live stream, I have been really good about online shopping. Like, no, I don't want to do it. But last week, I, I just, <laughs> I blacked out. <laughs> I was like, whole week, I was just on Sephora. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, I like this on Amazon. Ooh, I like this. Ooh, magnetic lashes. Yes, let's get that. <laughs> Out the door. Out the door, this is no online shopping nonsense. <laughs> well, I didn't do that bad, but it was really like, I, I blacked out last week. I was like, during the office hour, I was like, mm, Sephora. And I suspect, okay, I, I really suspect it's because last, well, this week, and maybe the, a little bit of late last week, a lot of YouTube videos, because I follow a lot of beauty bloggers, a lot of YouTube videos were sephora recommendations the sephora vib sale we don't have the sephora vib sale in singapore i mean the us and canada i think you got y'all will have the um sale first vib 20 percent and 15 percent. yeah all of you have the sale first and then on our side we have it after so we uh here in asia it's just flat straight 20 percent for everybody um 20%, I think it's for gold members, we get access first. And then the black card members, they also get the 20%, but they come in like a day or two later. So usually the black card members will be seeing us gold members shopping and buying and buying everything and everything is sold out. <laughs> and then they come and get the pickings. <laughs> and But I mean, it's not that bad, but everybody gets 20%, yeah? So everybody gets 20%. So usually the sale I, if i'm not mistaken it's may I, I i'm not really sure but it comes around end of april may adidas is having 30 percent off oh my gosh hi Mon maggie oh okay maggie is here amy is here clara is here and then maggie's got a new puppy oh serena obviously i am a gold member i am like the us version of vib rouge okay <laughs> many times over <laughs> i have two gold memberships 
can you imagine how bad I am? I have a gold membership in Malaysia and I have a gold membership in Singapore. Yes, Sephora. <laughs> I'm trying to consolidate it. So I'm trying to consolidate everything into Singapore. But sometimes the things are actually cheaper in Malaysia. So I would be like, hmm, is this cheaper in Malaysia? Is that cheaper in Singapore? Then I will go, okay, I'm going to buy this in Singapore. I'm going to buy that in Malaysia. So yeah, I have two gold memberships. <laughs> uh, no, previous, this year, this year, okay, um, I'm not doing it anymore. I used to have two gold memberships. Then I decided, nah, I can't maintain two gold memberships. It's, it's not that hard. Honestly, it's not. It, you... Because when I replenish, let's say I buy like a couple of moisturizers, you're a gold member, like crazy. So anyway, I don't want to talk about what kind of memberships I have. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to put a bit of moisturizer. Uh, no, sorry, my mask. So I'm, I don't want to use the one that I've been using for the past two weeks. I'm just, I dug out this Christine Scramac gel mask. And I honestly... Don't know if it's good, but you know, there's this website. Hang on, I've got something in my eye. Eyelash. Okay, there's this website that I check. I don't know if you all have um, heard about it. Uh, it's called Cost DNA. C-O-S DNA. So I'm, I'm, I like to check. I don't know if the, the reviews, no, it's not a review, you know. It's like, um, it's a website that tells you the, cosmetic ingredients and whether the products are good or not. So it's, I'm just going to type it here. So every time I see something new, I like to go to this website and I'll key in. So this website is like cost DNA and you can, you can search the product. You can search the ingredient. You can even analyze the cosmetic. So for example, like some products, you can't find it, but then they have like the whole ingredient, like ingredient list maybe online or on the product, and you can type it inside and it will tell you whether it's like grade one, grade two, grade three, whether it's a bad product or it's a good product or something. So let's check this one because I, I don't really know if, so I can actually check like product search. When I saw I'm in Sephora, I'm always like checking, you know, origins, cause DNA and I put, and it's, it's you know, some of the, I don't follow exactly everything, but it's good to know like the top, maybe the top 10 products what does it say? It's like acne causing or it, you know, it clogs your pores or it's, you know, some, so it's a good, it's a good information guide. You don't have to follow it exactly, but I do find that um, it's quite a, yeah, like a, like a good guide. Let me go look at this. So Dr. Mac Christine, let's see what it says. Whether this is, this mask will cause acne. <laughs> I got this mask free from my uh, facial place. I can't remember why she gave it to me free. Probably I spent too much money at <laughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, no result. Okay, so let's try another. Yeah, I like this website. You can find a lot of things in it. Hello, Carm Gel Mask. If you can't find the product, then you can put the ink. Oh, okay. No, I can't find it. Okay, never mind. Too bad. I can't find it. So usually what I'll do is if I can't find the product in the website, I will go to the product's website. I'll take the full ingredient list. I'll copy it and then I'll paste it inside their cosmetic analyzer. You can like paste it, paste it right here and it'll tell you all the ingredients like aqua, water, danger level one. <laughs> or zero, and then uh, the methacone, danger level seven, uh, clogs your pores, you know, things like that. It's quite interesting. And sometimes uh, they'll tell you, you no, know, okay, because you know in the ingredient list at the back, it's like PEG, methyl, blah, 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 two, five, five, six, seven, eight, blah, 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 blah. Like, what is that? Mm, poison, poison. Like this website, cause DNA. So I'm going to put a little bit Oh, it's like a je jelly. I just my first time opening it. Mm. This is a mask. I'm going to put it a little bit. Maggie's asking, are eye creams necessary? Why can't we use regular face moisturizer, which costs a lot less for the whole face? Okay. I am 
totally with you until like I use I just use moisturizer and put under my eye right here. But um you know what I notice about my under eye right here? When I put creams that are a little bit too heavy, like, you know, sometimes my moisturizer is like thick. It's literally oil <laughs> on my face. I get little bumps under my eye here, like milia seed. I, I think so, but it's not milia seed. So I read somewhere that, you know, some moisturizers are actually very thick, very, you know, very moisturizing. They're not really suitable for under the eye because under the eye, you got a lot of oil ducts because of all the tear ducts and everything. So if you put a moisturizer that's too thick, too thick under the eye and near the eye duct and all that, you might clog that and then you'll get, you know, infection or milia seeds. So that's why they don't actually advise to put moisturizer uh, near your under your um, near your eye area because you don't know what kind of ingredients in that moisturizer that may clog up the tear ducts and the pores around here because they are more sensitive because your eye area is a little the eyes the skin around the eye here is thinner so the pores and everything so it's it's about it's about that so some moisturizers to me are thin enough to put around the eye and for example like this water water cream thing that i finished I put this around my eye area. It doesn't, no effect. But when I use, um, there was another cream. When I use my Sisley moisturizer, which is very, very rich. And uh, I use that at night. When I started to put it around my eye, like just like dab it along, I started to get little white bumps. So I was like, oh, that's weird. That's weird. So when, that's when I realized there are certain creams that are okay for under the eye, but there are certain creams that are actually no good because clog the pores <laughs> but they're okay for the rest of the face which is very strange right oh yeah oh oh and yes you're right yeah may's right as well if your face moisturizer is too heavy or contain strong actives like retinol and all that actually you shouldn't be putting it under your eye that's true that's true so like some of um some moisturizers maybe they have a little bit of active ingredient like maybe a bit of lactic acid or a glycolic acid you shouldn't be putting it around your eye because eye area is very sensitive. It's very thin and you don't want to, yeah, you just don't want to put it there because, you know, you might actually go into your eye as well. So, yep, exactly, Amy. So, Amy's saying regular face moisturizers are usually more ex occlusive. So, it's not suitable for under the eye as the skin is thinner and then it's more sensitive. So, yeah, I didn't really know this kind of things when I was younger, I just put one moisturizer all over. But at, when you're young, your skin just takes it, man. It takes a beating. It's like, whatever lah. You can put petroleum on your face and you'll be absolutely fine. But, I don't know. After I hit 30, <laughs> I'm way past 30, okay? But, you know, we're, we're like many steps after 30. <laughs> but once I hit that 30 mark, like 29, they were like, we we cross the we cross the thirty mark. That's when not everything petroleum doesn't seem to work anymore for the skin. <laughs> like Vaseline, petroleum jelly. Uh uh no no no. The skin says, "What the heck are you putting on your face, woman? Are you kidding me? That's petroleum." <laughs> the skin like Arr. yeah. So so creams that used to work all over the face, neck, armpit, and hair <laughs> everywhere. No, no, no. Only certain spots. <laughs> this mask is really weird. It's like a gel. You can't even see it on my face. No wonder she gave it to me for free. <laughs> anyway, I love this website. If you guys don't know this website, this Cause DNA website, it has been around for ages. And I mean, take it with a pinch of salt. So let's let's look for one. Huh? Let's look for one. Let's look for this Tatcha uh, water cream because this is quite popular. A lot of people... So they rely on people like me and you like to put new products into the website. And there are some people on this website that are absolutely like they're really hardworking because they're constantly checking products and, you know, constantly updating this website. And I know a lot of websites are trying to take this website down, but they're quite, you know, they're quite neutral. They're not, um, they're not pushing. Pro it's not a product pushing website. So I don't know. 
So you can see, I just keyed in the Tatcha, the Tatcha water cream, and you can see there's so many entries of the Tatcha water cream. And it's it depends. Let's say I I will entry it in 2000 and wow, 2007, the first entry. So I'm gonna just click one, any random one. And you can see the whole, all the ingredients, every single one, the first one, what it is, and then the number. And you can see whether it's acne or it's an irritant. And you can read the function. It's an emollient, it's a solvent, it's a pigment, it's a fragrance, it's a pH adjuster. They'll tell you all kinds of things. But obviously take it with a pinch of salt because, for example, um, maybe it says this item. Rose multi lor fruit extract. One of the ingredients in this, it says that it's a fragrant and it's a plant extract. So for me, I'm very, I don't really want fra fragrance in my product. So, but the thing is, it's not at the top. So I'm like, uh, maybe it's okay. You know, it's kind of like halfway down. I'm like, mm, all right, I'll, I'll accept it. You know, so you, you kind of like judge it on your own skin and whether you your, your tolerance like you don't mind but if that fragrant item was right at the top like second line i'm like nah, nah sorry no no thank you <laughs> so then you can tell you like some items right at the bottom is preservative so i really like this website i don't know if you guys know about it but uh, yeah costdna.com obsessed <laughs> always checking stuff you know maybe skincare I don't think they do they have hair care i can't remember i think not really hair care oh amazing transparent gel mask is like not very short yeah it's not does it no kick right like it's like absorbing into my skin <laughs> my skin is like what is this water <laughs> so anyway let's let me tell you what i've purchased okay hi yo <laughs> I'll tell you what I purchased, uh, just a few things, and then I'll tell you what is on my list. Cause, cause I kind of know that the Safari sale is coming, but I'm I'm itching. Okay, I'm itching to buy something. I'm itching for something to arrive. And give it to me. <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Receiving packages. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, so the first thing, okay, actually I've told this before, but this was one item that I purchased about maybe two, no, no, more than two weeks ago. Is it two weeks ago? Two or three weeks ago. I just wanted to show you all what I bought. Um, when did I show this? I think I showed it on one of my IG live streams. This is the um, Mel in Melbourne, uh, Mel in Mel, Mel in Melbourne? Yeah, that's right. Mel in Melbourne, Anna Luisa Yeris. Oh my God, that's a mouthful. Mel in Melbourne times Anna Luisa pearl earrings. So I bought this and it's kind of like online shopping. You know what I mean? Though I kind of like justify it because I want to support her. So I'm justifying it. Justifying it. <laughs> I bought two pairs, okay? Hey, where's one more? Yeah, I don't know where's one more. But anyway, I bought two pairs. Oh, oh. Ooh. <laughs> Flying everywhere. <laughs> okay, this one. They're really pretty, you know. Clara saying we gotta keep the economy and careers alive. So pretty, so pretty. I'm not a pearl person, honestly. To full disclosure, <laughs> I actually sold a lot of my pearl earring, a pearl jewelry. I'm not like Amy. Amy looks good in pearls. I'm, I'm like, yeah. Good. I don't know, maybe when I'm older, I have pearl necklaces and all, but like all my Chanel pearl earrings, I think I sold two or three pairs. Because I, I just... But, you know, since Mel says hers are pearl, they are really pretty. And I think the website when I bought it that time, it was 15% discount. You know, I just... It's funny, I don't, I don't think Anna Luisa watches this, but, you know, Anna Luisa, I mean... I'm the what brand ambassador. So <clears throat> for one year, uh, was it one year? I can't remember. Something like that. Brand ambassador. Basically, they they will send me some stuff to try. All right, and I, you know, and as genuine, genuine. So if I don't like it, I'll tell you guys that sucks. But um, they give me this code, right? This code, which is um, like ten percent discount. 
But I told them, you know, you give me this code that's 10% discount, but your website is always 15 or 20% discount. So any sane person will never use my code or anybody's code. Like there are other brand ambassadors, like I think Mel is also a brand ambassador, like things like that. But they give you this code, which is 10% discount. But when you go on their website, which I always tell you guys, go on their website, look at their <laughs> discounts, spring uh, or Mother's Day discount. And those discounts are like 15%, 20%. And I'm like, why bother giving me a discount code when your own discount code is so much better? Obviously, you will never be able to find out whether my subscribers through my recommend recommendations are using my code. Because honestly, who's going to use a 10% discount code when you are giving a 20% discount code? Oh, no, no, I tell you, but never mind. That's my little rant. And I told them, I said that even I won't use my own discount code. <laughs> I'm going to use your spring discount code because it's 15% off. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this, it's really funny. It's really funny. So I used Anna Louisa's discount code for 15% off spring. <laughs> and I got these. And <laughs> freshly made Amy said, ha, 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 so true. Right? Like, at least have it on at par, you know, so that it, it doesn't clash. Like, if you're going to give 15% on your website, make sure my code is also 15% so that, you know, there's no like, oh, people, you know, I've got a code, but don't use my code. Use the website's code because that's 15% off, <laughs> which is what I always do. Like, duh. Okay, so anyway. Anyway. <laughs> it's funny. So I bought two pairs. That's how, how we support other people, right? So I bought two pairs. This is mine, and this is my mom's. I wanted to buy three, one, for, one more for my sister-in-law in America, but I sort of can't remember <laughs> if she wears earrings. And uh, yeah, I, I can't remember, but I, I do know my sister-in-law has really sensitive skin. She has eczema skin, and also I was like, mm, I think I don't want to risk it because Otherwise, I'm going to have two pairs. <laughs> what am I going to do with two pairs? So look, look. Uh, yeah, I bought two. So look at this. What I actually really like about it is you can take out the pearl. See? You can take out the pearl. And then you've got another pair of earrings. Ah! All right. Let me just wear it. Hey, man, stop focusing. <laughs> Stupid webcam. <laughs> look. So if you're not into pearls, you can just wear like the earring on its own. And I kind of dig it. I kind of dig just, just that. And then when I feel, when I feel I'm so pretty, oh, so pretty, <laughs> then I'll put the pearl back. It's actually good quality. Yeah. I don't know if these are, I'm terrible. You know? I never check. <laughs> I never check whether these are freshwater pearls or they are man-made pearls. I have honestly, no idea. All I know is when it came back on st in stock, and I was like, ah, I'm going to get it because I missed out in December. When she first launched it in December, December was such a busy month. I was, you know, Christmas and everything. And just I was just so busy in December that I couldn't find time. I know. How can I not find time to do online shopping? That's amazing. But anyway, I couldn't find time to go onto the website. I kept forgetting. And they sold out. So I was like, ah. Okay, I feel bad right now. <laughs> yeah, with or without the pearl, right? So cool. It's, it's pretty. So when you feel, oh, so pretty. So pr you know what song is that? I know, you know, Adam Sandler from what movie is that? I'm so pretty. Oh, so pretty. Come on, people. What movie is that? <laughs> is it Wedding Singer? I know y'all know. I know y'all know. West Side Story? Is it? I'm so pretty. Oh, so pretty. But that, that was sung by Adam Sandler. I don't know whether that's the original. <laughs> oh, West Side Story. Okay. 
stuck in my head because it's funny. So yeah, so that okay, so this is my I guess this is the, the biggest online purchase because they're Mel, they're not cheap, okay. <laughs> but uh it's all right. What's, it's done, it's done, it's done. <laughs> it's done, it's paid for. Okay, let's wipe this off my face. You don't even know I've got a mask on my face, right? Because it's so like nothing, nothing, nothing. Which is okay. Apparently it's called Elo Calm. Oh, I, 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 okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. The word is Elo Calm. Elo, like giving, giving you the impression that's like aloe vera. <laughs> Hi, Ingrid. Oh my gosh, hello. May is telling me they're Swarovski pearls. Ah, okay, so they're not fresh water pearls. They should be fresh water pearls. <laughs> I don't know. But they're nice. They're very nice. They're weighty and they feel good. So, what else did I buy? Okay, so I bought that. Then last week I went on to Sephora and I tell you, <laughs> I was like taking this in my cart, put, putting it in my cart, taking that out from my cart, putting this on my cart. I ended up buying three things. My cart was, I think, 10 things. I was like, all right, at Add to cart, yep, yep, add to cart. Yep. Oh, I need that add to cart, add to cart. I was on, I blanked out, I blanked out. <laughs> my whole um, no cosmetic, uh, no cosmetic purchases, um, you know, my no, low shopping on cosmetic just <laughs> out the door, get out, we don't talk to you. <laughs> the whole, like, whole day I was like, yep. Ooh, what's this, cost DNA, interesting, interesting. <laughs> I, I was in the zone, but because some subconscious part in my brain, right at the back of my brain was practically screaming like, yeah, stop it. <laughs> that part of me was deleting the items from the cart because <laughs> the front part was like, yep, okay, add, 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 add. Ooh, nice, add. <laughs> Ooh, what's this brand, add? <laughs> Then the subconscious like, stop it, stop it. So I ended up deleting, removing, and everything, and I ended up buying three things. I bought. <laughs> I'm actually so sad. <laughs> I bought three. Okay, I bought three things. Uh, wait, was it three things? Maybe it was five. <laughs> Maybe it was five. Hang on. <laughs> Man, I'm blanking out again. Let me check. Oh, ooh, ooh, okay. My order has been received. <laughs> we are working on your order. Okay, let me tell you what I bought. The list looks super long, right? But I never knew that if you buy from Sephora online, you can add um, samples. And we'll talk about samples after this. <clears throat> I'm not a fan of it, but uh, well, blanked out. Samples, samples, thank you very much. <laughs> I bought, okay, what did I buy? What did I buy? What did I buy? What did I buy? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I bought the Mario Badescu Enzyme Cleansing Gel. I bought, yeah, because I think the one that I have is the AHA Holly Frog one. Um, which is expensive, and this was how much? This is 20 bucks. Big bottle, 250 ml. <gasps> okay, and I put what else did I buy? I bought another, like a serum. Uh, it's the Purposeful Skincare by Allies Multi Acid and Probiotics Perfecting Night Serum. The name <laughs> wins it all. I'm telling you, there's probably like this bunch, this huge boardroom of people that just sit around creating the names for these products. They pick the right words, you know, probiotics, perfecting, <laughs> serum. What else? Multi acids. Oh. <laughs> You're like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, 
my god. I'm sure, I'm sure there has to be some, you know, there has to be some kind of like 20 people in the room creating the right words. And whether or not it's true, I I don't know. Okay, then there's this one. <laughs> this, is a, this is a sample. Sunday Riley, good jeans. Good jeans. Jeans as in your, you know, your jeans. Good jeans. All in one. Oh my god, you just break down the words, okay? Good jeans. I don't have good jeans. You giving me good jeans? Okay, I have okay, good jeans. All in one. That's it. That's it. That's all I need. All in one. Lactic acid. Wow. Scale off this dirt face. Treatment. <laughs> I love reading. I know it's I'm crazy, right? But I love, okay, I spend so much time in Sephora on top of looking at it, but I just take a look at the product and how ridiculous, you know, the the the, the, <laughs> the name of the product is. But you know how much thought they put into it. It's like, it's everything. You don't need anything else. <laughs> you don't need anything else. Good genes all in one acid lactic treatment. I don't even need to clean my face anymore. It's all in one. <laughs> oh. Good jeans. Jay is saying, good jeans works well. Broke me out at first, but the skin gets used to it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Acids. If you ever use an acid on your face, the first few weeks, it's not good. But after a while, you get used to it. So, like, my skin today is, like, super... Man, it's dry. Why? I'm going to put this. I'm going to continue. I'm going to put my niacinamide 10% booster. Now there are so many of this niacinamide um, serums. And I actually really like niacinamide. I've been using this for years. And it's a good, uh, like, a, like a recovery serum. You know, if, you, if you've been out in the sun too, like, you know, sunburn a little bit. Or, you know, you use too much actives with acids uh, and all that kind of stuff on your face. This is like a, the opposite of it. It's very, very calming. So I'm going to... Do, 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 do. I use a lot. <laughs> it's like water. Dab it on the skin. Maggie saying, I didn't see a difference with Sunday Riley. I stopped buying it. It's expensive, right? I got that as a sample. So, in, yeah, somebody's saying that in, um, it's, ooh, everybody's like, Sunday Riley stuff is really good. It's really good. Okay. We should be writing these things down. <laughs> Where's my book? What is this? Oh, okay. My book's here. My book's here. So, I have... I have like a list of things <laughs> that I want to buy. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, okay. So what else did I buy? So I bought the I bought that multi-acid and probiotic perfecting night serum. I bought that. I bought the Mario Bodescu cleansing gel. Okay. Oh. Okay. This is a uh, this was a bit random, but I've always wanted to try stuff like that. I honestly think it's going to be a waste of money, but this has been in my cart for months, like months, like six. I think even the, since the last sale, it's just I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to buy it, but I'll tell you what it is. It's the Drunk Elephant. Just listen to the name. Drunk Elephant, the bronzy, anti-pollution, sunshine drops, booster and bronzer. Sunshine! Sunshine! <laughs> oh, do you guys do that as well when you read? The, you, 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 the next time you go to any kind of drugstore or, you know, just take a moment and just read the labels. It's, it's so ridiculous. Anti-pollution. This, if this was the drug, it's anti-pollution. Sunshine drops. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's 
genius. It's genius. It's everything you want in a bronzer drop thing. <laughs> no, a bronzer gel. It's everything. Because you're out in the sun, but not really out in the sun. So you said, well, have some sunshine. <laughs> and, then, and then because it's, you know, it's all dusty, don't worry. It's anti-pollution. <laughs> Oh, drunk elephant. Oh my God, you're hilarious, hilarious. Uh, okay, it's just, maybe it's just me, but really, it's funny. So I bought it. So apparently it's a, it's like a gel, like a little gel thing that you can add to your foundation to give you that sunshine glow. And uh, I've always wanted to try stuff like that. Um, they have it, like, you know, all kinds of brands have this, it's like a bronzing thing that just brightens up whatever you have. So I have like some foundations that are too fair for me right now. Though I've been at home, so I might actually be able to use them again. Anyway, yeah, I always wanted to try. I always wanted to try. And since I'm stuck at home, I'm feeling like I need some sunshine on my face. I bought that. And then I got one more thing. One, two, three. Oh, no, no, sorry. I got two more things. Two more things. I bought the... I'm so confused because there are some like there are some packets of samples which I'm like, did I buy that? No, no, no. Zero dollar. <laughs> okay. Jill Stewart's blushes. Like I need any more blushes, but this is Michelle Wong's fault. Okay. It's all her fault. She and Tara Babies, both of them bought Jill Stewart. And I, I never really buy Jill Stewart on Sephora because when I go to Japan, it's so much better. There are so much more varieties in Japan. There are so much more uh, different colors. Like Japan has maybe the whole range of 30 colors. Sephora carries maybe like seven. But I got influenced, okay? I got influenced. Two blushes. Lilac. Baby lilac. This is like the mixed compact blush and a spicy blush. And I honestly can tell you, I'm so excited for the blush. <laughs> blush, Amy said it as well. Blush is one thing that transforms your entire face, okay? Because you can put your eyebrows and everything, but once you have a little bit of this, you don't look so green anymore. <laughs> Oh, we've got some people saying Sunday rally doesn't work. Waste my money. Good jeans is good, but not the oils. Okay, yeah. Sunday rally doesn't work. It's overpriced. It's ready to auto correct. <laughs> oh my god. Let's go through it. I, I love Blue Mini saying that especially their auto correct eye cream. Oh my god. I, that's it. We gotta go into Sunday Riley's website and just check out the names of their products. Auto-correct, <laughs> auto you know, automatically fix everything that's wrong with my eye. Auto-correct. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> am, I only, am I the only one that's getting a kick out of this? I think I am. <laughs> but it, it just... Where is it? Where is that auto? <laughs> Look, just listen to this name, okay? Just listen to this eye cream. Just the name itself makes me want to buy 10 bottles. Sunday Riley's. Auto correct. Brightening and depuffing eye cream. Give it to me. Now. Bring it here. Come on. Oh, no, correct the thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like this is bad. This is a bad spelling check, okay? Never supposed to, it wasn't supposed to be like that. I, it didn't mean to be like that. <laughs> no, Jay, you can't. No, I mean, I mean it works. I, I find it funny because they they find the right word to use for the item, but it's like you can just say, you know, like, um, I don't know, depuffing eye cream. 
right? But they add the additional, like, you know, it's like filler words, right? Which which catches you. Autocorrect. What does that mean? Really? What does that mean? To, what does that mean in an eye cream? Autocorrect. I don't know. <laughs> what? But it means so many things to so many people. Like to me, autocorrect means get rid of my fine lines. For you, it could mean autocorrect my dark circles. Does that word is so it, it's so um extensive, you know. It means everything to anybody. <laughs> exactly, it's a scheme. <laughs> and then and then like the bronzer that I bought, I mean I fell for it. I fell for it. I'm not gonna lie, I fell for it. But I never knew I needed a bronzer that could give me anti-pollution. How do you go? How do you how is it anti-pollution? The moment I as long as I'm alive and breathing, there is pollution, but no. Put that bronzing drops. It's anti-pollution, okay? <laughs> and then obviously they add the they, they enhance the bronzer because everybody knows a bronzer is to give you a glow, but they go sunshine drops. Sunshine drops. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love marketing. I really love marketing. Uh, oh, Amy's like, works very well on my mom. Oh, it works very well on me too. But it's, I mean, it's, it's just the amount of effort that they put into naming the products. I wish they would divert that effort into making good products. But I mean, some of them are good. It's just that dudes divert, you know, we don't need 20 people marketing, creating the names. Okay, just get one guy. It's a bronzing drop. Oh, okay, cool. Bronzing drop. Well done. No, they got like, no, 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 no. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Add another four words inside. <laughs> ah, love it. Love it. Anyway, that's my little spill of this. I, 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 I mean the packaging. Oh, and, and okay, another effort is the packaging. Oh. <laughs> That's why I actually like Paula's choice. I feel like, hmm, I'm looking at the name. <laughs> Such lies, okay. Re let me read this to you. I actually like this toner. It's very, it's very hydrating. Paula's Choice, resist. That's the line. Advanced. What does advanced mean? What does advanced mean? Replenishing toner. Totally need it. Replenish everything that's lost from my skin. Replenish it! What does it do? It's supercharged toner. Smooth wrinkles. Oof. Bill's collagen. That's a lie, though. And then anti-irritant calms redness. Okay, so it's uh, some of it, you know, some of the words are like, yeah, a bit like, mm, don't be adding those things. But it's not so, it's not so ridiculous, like autocorrect. Like, what is that? Anti-irritant, maybe, because it has some things, but autocorrect, anti-irritant. I'd rather take anti-irritant. So yeah, okay, polar stress is not so bad. Jay's like, yeah, it's ugly, but it's, it's okay. Like for me, it's fine. You know, the packaging, though they have improved their packaging, it's not so ugly anymore. But look at this. Just look at this packaging and look at this packaging. This looks really good on the vanity, obviously, but you're paying so much money for this packaging. Have you seen Tatcha's box? Like this comes in a box like yay big and with a little spatula, which for the life of me, I have no idea where it is. It's like, I was like, what is that? <laughs> God, pollution for the world, right? So, and it's just like, I mean, I mean, mm, it's very luxe. It's very luxe. It's a treat. But if you pay for this, you know, it's so expensive. Even I'm like, do I want to toss it? Like, do I recycle this? Because maybe I should just keep it and put my jewelry because... I, I can't. I paid for this thing. <laughs> Me being the auntie, okay. 
like, it's expensive, but to keep it, I'm gonna be my mom. Oh yeah, Clara, you're right. The cosmetic industry definitely needs to be regulated with this. One day, I hope. I'm just going up to see your comments. So Drunk Elephant is so expensive, but very tempted, especially to buy their moisturizer. So yes, Drunk Elephant is on my list. The La La... <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to. One more, one more, one more. Come on, entertain me. One more. Drunk Elephant's... Cream, Lala. The name is called Drunk Elephant Lala Retro Whipped Cream. What is Lala Retro? Lala, like la la la. I'm so pretty, la la la, retro. I... Such filler words that I feel is such, so ridiculous. Oh, Serena saying, some say the baby facial is good. Okay, oh, I have tried it. I bought it when I was in the States because you can't get it. I don't think you can buy it in Singapore. I can't remember whether you can buy the Sukari facial in Singapore. But you can. If you can, I actually, I have it. It's really good. And you need to be very careful because it's 25% AHA. It strips that top layer of your skin. So you must remove it. I actually bought this cheapo moisturizer. This is from that same brand. Um, yeah, this is another thing that I bought. <laughs> this is from the same brand that I was using the mask because it's all rice and rice rice. So... Cheap moisturizers work just as well. And I, the ingredients are good. I checked all the ingredients on my trusty Cost DNA app. Uh, oh, not app, but website. And it was awesome. Oh, yeah. The baby, the Sukari baby facial burns the face. Oh, yeah. So don't use it if you've never used any acids on your face. Like, I have been using glycolic acid. Um, I've got, I've, I haven't used this. I actually used a retinol. No, sorry, not retinol. This is a tret, tret, tretinoin, tretinoin cream. I use this, uh, like, well, the other brand, the other brand is Retin A. And that's the popular one. So when people say Retin A, it's just the brand name. It's like when people say Colgate, Darlie, you know, Milo. It's, it's just the brand name, Xerox. <laughs> so Retin A is the brand name. and But basically, it's tretinoin cream. And I'm using 0.05%, which is... It's okay. It's not like... It's, the, it's on the higher end. Some people use 1%, 0.01%, 0.02%. But 5% is okay. But you need to build up your tolerance to retin A. And I don't use, uh, sorry, tretinoin cream. I don't use it every day because I use it maybe twice a week. And when I use it at night, the next day my skin is like, oh, <laughs> but it's really drying. So like I used that, today's Sunday, right? So I, I, had, I used it on, I think Thursday night. I've got some peeling around my nose. It's okay. I'm glowing. <laughs> so I don't use it yeah, often. But uh, if you really want to amp up your whole skincare and you're okay with acids, um, yeah, that's the step up from retinol. So retinol is, you know, the one that's really popular. It's You don't have to buy it. You can buy it off the counter. It's in many of the products, retinol. But for acne treatment, you actually need to get this from the doctor or some pharmacist that does dispense it. And I had acne when I was young. Like, you can see my acne here. Like, a lot of it. So, when I started on Retin-A, last time it was Retin-A, you could get it. Um, I had baby butt skin on my face, okay? <laughs> it was like... It, it was so smooth and so... Wow. But... 
there was that period, I think about two months, that I turned into this nightmare, like nightmare of a skin. I, I think I have that picture where my skin was just tomato red because it was just digging up all the shit from your face. You know, and it was causing so much inflammation, but it was just really creating actives on my skin. And then after that, it just got so good. Then I stopped using Retin-A. But now once in a while, I just pop it back in. Let me see if I have a picture of myself. I don't know. Yeah, you know, those days when we were young, and I was thinking I was 15 or 16 when I had really bad skin. Really, really bad skin. I didn't want to take photos. I'm like, no, don't take photos of me. No, I'm ugly. And I was ugly. I was really ugly. <laughs> I'm trying to look for it. Hang on. Give me a second. I'm pretty sure I have a photo. Like, it was really blur and really not clear, but my skin was just a nightmare. Anyway, so what else did I buy? No, that's it. Those are a few things that I purchased. What have y'all been buying? Come on, tell me. Oh, yeah. Pamela is saying this is anti-wrinkle and good for acne. It's true. It's true. Probably why I don't have... <laughs> I do have wrinkles. But yeah, people who use Retin-A like for a long term, long period, they, it's been proven that it, they don't have many wrinkles. If only I knew that when I was younger, I would, have, I would have continued to use it. So I'll be using it since I was 16. But I stopped because... I don't know. But do check with your doctor, you know, if you're going to use this kind of stuff. The only thing is, if you use it, you must make sure you use a really, really good sunblock because it strips off like a layer from your... Oh, okay, I do. I do. I'm all right. Okay. Be prepared to see the horror of my skin when I was 16. Are you ready? It's not very clear. It's not very clear. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, ah. Who is that? Okay. Are y'all ready? Come on. Tell me if you're ready to see Kat's skin when she was 16. I'm like. Those were the days, you know, when you're 16 and kids are mean. And you've got bad skin. Oh, that, that rhymes. 16, mean, and bad skin. It was tough. It was, a tough, it was the tough growing years. Woo! Okay. Oh, hang on, sorry. Oh. Wait. It's not that clear, but can you just... Just look at my cheeks. Oh my god. It's not showing up very well, but you can see like my entire here. And then my forehead is kind of like... I'm trying to... Anyway, you get the picture, okay? I had like acne all around here. Here... And on my top here. So you can see like my part here is like really smooth and beautiful. But I had acne all around here. Yep. Let's do that again. You can just tell, you know. There's a shadow of it. Yeah, that's me, man. Look at my skin. Oh my god. What a night. What a nightmare. It's been many years. Oh. How did I clear it up? Retinol or retinol, tretinoin, tretinoin, I'm telling you. So I had really bad acne. I, you don't see any red? Okay. <laughs> Clara said, I don't see any red. Just look at the shadow. Okay, I'm going to come a little closer. Oh, oh, there we go. All right, people, look now. Oh my God, look at that. Acne face of mine. Oh my God. Look at my cheeks, babe. What a nightmare! <laughs> yeah, I have acne all around here. So that's why I have acne scarring. Right here, you can see the old scars. But uh, yeah, you know, those were the good old days. Those were the days when you were 16 
you know, you're trying to find a boyfriend <laughs> and you're, uh, you know, trying to fit in. Yet uh, your skin is saying, uh-uh, girl, I'm going to give you some acne. <laughs> oh. Because the, cause the picture's blur. <laughs> the picture's a bit blurry. Oh, okay. Maybe I should go. Okay. Yeah, it, it kind of looks like blur. <laughs> oh, man. It's kind of blush that I never want to get again. It's a bad, bad product. It's a bad blush product. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, uh, I think you can see this one as well. So you can see like my cheeks here are like reddish, like extra. The blush is uh, the blush is really on point around here and here. You know that extra deep plum blush that's around my cheeks here and here and on my chin and all. Oh, 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 there we go. Yeah, see that blush? <laughs> That's acne. So anyway, how did I clear it up? Um, I had to see a doctor for sure. I had very, I think when I was young, my hormones were over, really overactive, really, really bad overactive hormones. I used to, because we got quite a few ladies here, you know, during the time of the month, I had really bad, like really, really, really bad. I could be, you know, I could be bleeding for like two weeks. <laughs> Too much information, I know. But yeah, those were the days when everything was just like, ah, ah, what's happening? What's happening? The body's just like on, on fire. <laughs> so it, it, just, it just showed up on my skin. And I had to, I had to see a doctor. Um, I was put on medication for a while. I think for maybe about six months. Six months, I, I, I don't know. You know, those were the days when the doctor doesn't tell you what they're giving you. They're like, take this pill, put this cream, see me in six months. <laughs> and that's what I did, right? So I, I know now that the cream used to be, um, it, it, it was this kind of, it was this retin A. Because when I, now that I look back about the, it's, it's the same color. This kind of like lime, light, light green color. And I tell you, the first month of putting it, I cried so much because it just, I already had like, you know, maybe like, you know, let's say like the acne is like maybe seven, seven spots on the face. But once I started on the uh, tretinoin cream, it became times five. So it just inflamed the whole face. So it's, it's kind of like a speed up process of the acne, you know, because before that, the acne was kind of like coming out like, a little bit, a little bit. But once you put that cream on, the acne said, party time! <laughs> but it's sort of like, it's, a, it's like a speed up process, you know, blackheads became acne and all that just ah, rampaged my skin. But within, I think it took a full month and then it started to just subside. And that was like the best time. So after, I think, easily three months, oh my gosh, people were like, your skin is so good now. My goodness, you look, oh, I'm like, yep, thank you. So by the time I was 17 and at the prom, mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Clara, you had the same thing. My gosh, it was so bad, you know. And, you know, high school is not like the high school. I mean, I love high school. I had good friends and I had, I had good friends and everything was great in high school. I'm not saying it was, a, I didn't have like, I wasn't bullied and you know, I was, I wasn't, the, I wasn't the mean girls and I wasn't like the nerdy part. I was kind of like in the middle, uh, you know, sort of okay. It's like, it's like the neutral, like I was in the neutral level, you know, the, the middle layer, obviously always looking like, wow, the pretty girls and then the nerds, you know, you're kind of like in the middle, right? So for me, I was in the middle, but you still feel very, very insecure in high school. And, and I, I think having a lot of this little hormonal changes does affect the confidence. So with the skin and all, and then with the, with the, you know, monthly situation, because I would be in so much pain. And then, you know, those days where, you know, if let's say it, 
oh, I don't know, in school for me, and I think for some of us here, we had to wear uniform, right? There was a, like this blue uniform. And <laughs> there were so many times that I was like, fuck, did I stain my dress? Oh my God, that would be like a nightmare. You know, like my pinafore would be like, oh. And then we had a bunch of girls like all crowding behind me, like, let's go, let's go to the toilet. Let's go to the toilet. <laughs> Those were the funny days, you know, like, you know, like it's too heavy or whatever. And then it leaks through. And then you're like, my, my blue pinafore will be like, mm. I mean, I can talk about it now, but it was traumatic. You know, it was traumatic because, you know, the pinafore is not black in color. You know, it's not a black dress. It's this purple. No, no, sorry. It's not purple. Sorry. It's this turquoise. A uh, bright turquoise thing <laughs> that you wear on top and then you just have that terrible day that you sat a little too long you're like oh shit and you get this like patch like that <laughs> and then you're like you tell your parents Sharon, Sharon, she, 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 she. I, think, I think I leaked through it or she, she, she. then she's like oh shit let's go toilet <laughs> and then they'll be crowding behind you like oh. <laughs> It happened many, many times, and that's because I have. I, it was just such a nightmare. Yeah, I reflect back on those days with such fond memories. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! And then you grab the jacket, right? Or you, yeah, yeah, you fill it up. It was so bad. Oh my god! And then finally, I had to see a doctor because my mom was like, I was, I was turning pale because. I, I, it was like, I think the worst, the worst, uh, the worst for me, I mean, this is a kind of like a very like intimate discussion. I, sorry for the guys that are listening. <laughs> but guys, you know, these are the things that women go through, okay? So learn. <laughs> Jay, if you're still here. So it's like, uh, I had one week, I think I had like, you know, like eight days of nonstop I'm like, I'm like dying and I'm like bleeding. <laughs> and then finally it finishes, eight day, eight day it finishes. And I'm like, yes, nightmare month, nightmare week is over. I can finally play games, have, you know, go recess and all that. Seven days later, it comes again. And I'm like, dude, dude, are you kidding me? Yo! <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, and then my mom be like, are you okay? I'm like, I don't know, mommy, I'm dying. I'm dying, I'm bleeding, I'm dying. <laughs> then, all right, that's it. Okay, okay, that's it. We had enough of this nonsense. You're seeing the doctor. <laughs> and the doctor said, okay, you're just over, you're just growing up, you're overactive. Take this pill, take this cream. And then, yep, it sorted, it sorted the shit out. <laughs> it was so, it's such a rubbish time. Ah, oh. but anyway, I reflect back on it with fond memories. <laughs> I'm starting to see whether if I have any photos of me without the acne anymore. I don't have it on my phone, but later I was glowing with sunshine drops. <laughs> Hi, Annie. Hello. Oh, Maggie saying all white outfit. Don't they understand? Like, all white in a girl's, at the age of girls, it's like, you're so evil, you know, all white. Maggie's saying, yay for menopause. <laughs> I don't want to take hormone therapy because I was so happy to be done with the monthly health. I know. I you know it's uh it's what do you call that like um there's a term for it where you know it's it's not like the grass is green on the other side. It's like um such a you know you want it but you don't want it. That kind of thought like the it's 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 you know when you know when it's when when you hit menopause that's when you get other issues. You know so like maybe back aches because I already feel the back aches um, now. You get back aches, you get, you know, and then I think there are a lot of problems that come with it. But I absolutely agree because my mom didn't take hormone therapy and um, there's a lot of issues, you know. So, But anyway, I don't know. I'm, I'm 
looking forward but not looking forward to it so because i know you know i know this little bit of estrogen you know it's like it's it's keeping this up yeah it's a two-edged sword thank you clara yeah it's a two-edged sword god there's there this monthly hassle is like ah how many days come on you you're killing my vibe <laughs> get up come on get up then when it's done you're like yes okay Bring on the progressions and estrogen. Come on, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. <laughs> and then after the, about the, the, the two weeks after, you're like, oh, everything just glows, you know. <laughs> but when that's all gone, uh, that's when I'm like, dang. That's when, that's when we need creams that says Bill Collagen anti <laughs> Okay, I'm done. Oh, I'm just so slow. We're hitting the one hour. Uh, so anyway, so that's my that's my little shopping, online shopping spill. I have a few things that is on my wish list. Let me tell you, okay? So one is the magnetic lashes, which Amy is like, magnetic lashes, they work really well. I'm like, okay, I need to get them. <laughs> so for us, out of stock at the moment, but I put them on my like wish list. Um, but there is another brand. So, uh, there's another brand of magnetic lashes that actually are not the two magnets. You can just put one, oh no, how do you say uh, the, there's one type of magnetic lash, which comes with the liner, which has some iron oxides and the lashes can stick on the eyeliner. So you don't need to have the learning curve of clipping two lashes together. So I heard, I heard uh, that's another type. And the brand in the States is called Kiss USA. Can't get it in Asia. So I'm trying to figure it out. How do I get this? I, I saw this Kiss USA Magnetic Lash brand on Tati's website. No, Tati. Tati? The YouTuber Tati. So she just, just like recently, like a few days ago, did a try on for these new magnetic lashes and the technology is amazing you don't need to oh wait amy is saying don't like the liner version though hurt has bad review about it really okay 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 <laughs> so the, but the, that that one doesn't have a learning curve because it's not two pieces right so anyway we'll just get one first so we're waiting for that i'm using my sunblock because people even if you're at home Use your sunblock, and especially if you're using actives so like my retinol and everything. I have to, otherwise, I'm gonna get when we were young, they are called freckles. <laughs> 20 years ago, they were called freckles, but you know, call it what it is, right? <laughs> Pigmentation. <laughs> oh, it depends on your eye shape. Oh, okay, monolith, so it won't work for me. Ah, okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So you have to have like like space here to draw a pretty a pretty decent eyeliner, like right here. And then that the 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 line or that liquid liner contains some ion ion ions? <laughs> Not ions, iron, iron bits that the magnets can stick on. So the magnets are on the lash, but then the liner has the ions that you can, it will connect to. So Tati did it on her web, on, on her YouTube. For one eye, it just went like, Doop! and she's like, what? It just, I even I was like, what? That's amazing. There's no fiddling or what. She just like, you know, adjusted it a little bit, but it stuck. The lash stuck to the eyeliner. I was... I need it. <laughs> and then, but the other eye, she had a bit of problem. So this, I think one eye, she couldn't get the lash to stick on the liner. So she kept having to make the eyeliner a little bit thicker, like to get more ion, ions, iron on the liner. Yeah, so one eye was so easy, but one eye was a little bit more challenging. So I was like, mm, okay. And the lashes were so cheap, like uh, it's some drugstore brand, Kiss. K I S S U S A, like three bucks or seven bucks or something for a pack. So, yeah. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see. I I, I saw. Yeah, using. Sing... 
Danny is saying, iron can stain the skin, so beware. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, it would, maybe we'll need to do a bit of research because you're actually putting it on the skin. So it's also something I, I have, I, I didn't, I was like, hmm. I'm not sure if that's good, you know. Should we be putting iron on our face? <laughs> I'm not sure. Though I take iron tablets once in a while, but I don't know. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, definitely do your research. Of course, the Ardell ones are the most, um, how do you say, like, you know, no chemical, just stick the two together. Yes. Waiting for it to come back on, in stock. Actually, they are selling it on another app, uh, Carousel. Um, Carousel has it. Uh, Lazada has it. But because Singapore is, um, you know, you can't, there's no shipping and everything. So I was like, no, 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 we're going to have fast shipping. Sephora. But obviously Sephora is a bit slow as well. So delayed, everything's delayed. Okay, so that's one thing. All right, so enough of makeup. Let me tell you three luxury related things that are on my wish list. <laughs> Not really, well, I won't say it's a wish list, but I've been suddenly like, mm, I think we want to buy it. Mm. All right, first one up. This is actually luxury related. I don't know if any of you have ever tried this. Apple Guard. I saw... Who did I watch? I think I watched Jerusha. And she mentioned... Oh, no, 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 not Jerusha. Sorry, sorry. Somebody mentioned Apple Guard. I'm trying to remember right now. One YouTuber, Shay Whitney. Yes, Shay Whitney. One of her videos, like recent videos, where she un revealed her new bag. I'm getting old, I swear. <laughs> I usually can remember all these things, but I think I'm watching too many YouTube videos that I'm like mm, a bit lost. But yeah, she revealed her new Never Full. She had an LV bag. Was it a never full? Oh my god, can somebody help me? It's aging. I can't remember the YouTube video. But anyway, she revealed a bag. And in her video, she said that uh, she is going to use Apple Guard on her bag. And she said she's always used Apple Guard on her bag to protect the patina. It's still patinas. Okay, well, I can remember she said it's still patinas. But yes, thank you, Danny. She sprayed it on her pochette Matisse. Yeah, so she sprayed the apple guard on the handle of the pochette Matisse. And though it did patina a bit, but apparently it protects. So I'm all curious about apple guard right now. I'm like, we need apple guard. <laughs> what is this apple guard? What is this? What is this magical potion? What is it? Have any of you used it? Like, Ghost official is asking, what is patina? Patina is the natural tanning of the... Uh, sorry, the natural process of tanning that you will get on natural cow leather. Cowhide leather. So leather is uh, comes in this very natural, almost cream-like color. And with, you know, oils and the sun and all that, it gets, it gets a little bit darker and that darkening is called patina. Yeah, it's, it's good. It, it, it's, and that patina is required to protect the leather. So, But it doesn't just doesn't look so nice because when you have something that's fresh and white and just, you know, it, it looks really nice and clean. But as it gets older, everybody's leather will patina differently. So maybe if you touch the leather a little bit too much, it gets really dark brown. <laughs> it's not very pretty. Okay, so I'm reading your comments. So... Uh, Tran is saying, I use Carbon Pro, it works, but I was scared shitless. <laughs> Carbon Pro in Canada. Okay, Clara is saying it works, but it feels, oh, you, you feel like it changes the texture. Oh, I would let it age naturally. That's true. It protects watermarks. Kind of like Scotch, uh, Danny saying it's kind of like Scotch Guard. I spray it on my suede, my blazers, my couch to make it waterproof, but makes it a bit. Clara saying it makes it a bit stiffer. Joanna says my PM is covered by a LV bando. I don't dare to remove it. Mm. Yeah, so I'm a, I don't know. I 
I'm not, not I'm not such a I, I'm not so worried about um, patina, you know. And though I though honestly, I really wish uh, bags, the one, the one which is hasn't patina yet, would stay that color, because you know when it's brown, not really pretty. So I don't know. I, I feel like trying it, but I pr maybe maybe I'll try it on something like really small first, and whether it will, you know, like Clara, you're saying it makes it stiffer. Because if it's stiff already, it's I don't know. I just don't like the feel. I, I like that, you know, that soft, pliable feeling of the leather. Hey, Tram, are you saying that does it does it make does it make the leather hard? It protects it from water marks, but does it make the leather, okay, not hard, but like a little bit stiff? Does it do it? This Carbon Pro, I'm interested. Okay, let me write it down because I'm going to forget. Let me write it down. Let me add to the list of things that I'm interested to buy. <laughs> yes, I have a list. This is how I keep track of my life. I write things down <laughs> if I can find a pen. Carbon Pro, huh? I'm sure Amazon will sell that. Okay. I'm still I'm still a very paper driven person. Paper, pen, uh, post-it notes. I'm all that I'm, I'm all about that life. I do type things in my phone, but I find it so much faster if you just write it down, you know, write it, jot it down. Amazing. I just don't buy bags with a shed. Yeah, that's one way as well. JJ is saying, try it on a small piece of leather like a luggage tag. <gasps> All right, people. So talking about, okay, we'll come back to the talking about luggage tag. So let me tell you what the other thing that I'm looking for. So Apple Guard is something that I, I'm interested in. And now Carbon Pro. So let's talk about two bags that I ugh, am really like, I want it. I want it, I want it, I want it. <laughs> Amy is saying, I, heard, I saw Amy's message just now. She's saying that you want the multi pochette in khaki. <laughs> uh, Clara, did you get your bag? <laughs> my, my, where's my multi pochette? Let me go and grab it. I just did, um, I just filmed a first impressions and first impressions and uh, pro, what the heck did I film yesterday? First impressions and the pros and cons of this bag yesterday. And, you know, I just, I, I, I'm trying to edit it today or maybe tomorrow. I have some videos coming up next week already, but yeah. I uh, did that and I'll just tell you guys what I feel like, you know, just like, do I recommend this? I think it's a real 50-50. 50% no, because really, really, honestly, 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 it is three pouches, the round pouch and a strap and a chain. And, you know, that's, that's, that's really it, you know. Is it really a bag? Is it really a bag? Nah, not really. <laughs> but, so in that sense, it's like, you, you kind of like forced to buy three SLGs and a strap and a chain in a piece. If you, you know, if you logically think about it, LV is making us buy five pieces as one. Okay, so that's my no, that's my no spill. And then obviously it's a very trendy piece, right? But my yes spill is that it's kind of cool kind of cool <laughs> it's kind of different you know you know who would have ever thought about putting things together and just like ah yeah 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 you can't get weirder than this you know you can't get more 
out there than putting three pouches together. And it is pretty handy. But if you think you're going to put your whole life inside these three pouches, then you're wrong because it doesn't fit. It's, it's just basically a little mini bag. If you think about it, just imagine it. It's a little mini bag, right? It's a mini bag. I do like the fact that it's slightly bigger than your usual pochette and your pochette accessoire. There is, it is actually a little bit bigger. So you can actually put some stuff inside. It's not like really three pouches. So my, it's a 50-50. Now you get it. I, I think for people who get this bag, kind of like my Valiset bag. Well, basically for me, like my recent purchases, I have been going for weirder things. <laughs> I've been going for things that are different from my collection already because I have like the usual collection. I have the jumbo. I have the flap. I have the boy bag. <laughs> I have a tote. You know, I have things that are like standard, 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 standard. You know, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it, I, I'm very, very blessed to have those things. So now I'm just... I'm kind of interested to look for something a little bit different. So when I got after, and after I got my paint can, my can's paint can, I was like, okay, that's it. I need bags like that. They make me happy. They are interesting. They are, they're just unique. You know, they're, uh, when I need my standard bags, I've got my standard bags. And it's, it's, it's like, these are the type of things that would be just, you know, it's just a little fun, you know, a little fun fun in your collection. Hi, Deborah. Hello. Hi, Anita. Yeah, so so when I got my cans, my, my pig can, whew, started a whole new journey for me, okay? Then I got my Valis set, which I... So fun, so fun. So this, is, this falls into that category where you have enough bags in your collection that, you know, fulfills a little bit of everything, then you can have this one or two fun pieces. Don't overdo it, okay? Don't go like... Every piece is fun piece because that, that's it's it's not uh, it's not cost effective and also you know it's a trendy piece. Um, but what makes this fun piece a little bit more practical is that when it's no longer fun, you can break it apart. So that's the only plus point. Like for example, my cans bag, when it's no longer fun, it's still a paint can. <laughs> it's like dang, it's a paint can. But where for this, when it's no longer trendy to wear the whole thing, and you feel like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll keep using the pouch, I'll keep using this for travel, I can use the coin purse, you know, I can use the stress. So it's that it's that balance of, yeah, it's so fun, and yet it can be practical. So I feel like in that sense, my 50% is okay. But this thing is not cheap, huh? Um, I paid 2000 400 for it, sing, sing dollars. 2.4K sing dollars. That's a lot of money. But I know people are saying, well, if you split it into three SLGs and all, yeah, no, no, you're not splitting it into three SLGs. But if, you, if that's how you want to justify it, sure, go ahead. <laughs> but as a whole complete set, $2,400. That's a lot. Yeah, it's, we can justify it in our head, you know, to say that, well, you know, you're getting three pouches and you're getting a strap and a chain and it's a good deal. No, sorry. <laughs> Tell me when was the last time you walked into LV and you said, give me five SLGs at the same time. Give me the accessoire, give me the mini pochette, give me a small coin purse, give me a strap and give me a chain. You will never do that, right? You will never... <laughs> Oh, you most likely won't. Okay, I won't say never, but you will most likely not do that. But in this situation, you're kind of forced to. So, <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that justification is like, it's kind of irrelevant justification. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And here's another good thing, okay? If you do buy it and you decide, nah, not my deal, not my thing, you can actually sell it for a profit right now. So if you can get it now, you might be able to make some money out of it because there are some crazy prices of brand new pieces. When I got it and I was like, well, I wasn't sure, you know, I was like, eh, eh, 
was a lot of money for one eye, one, one combination of things. And then I was thinking, well, should I make a quick buck? <laughs> that was before I started to use it, right? I was brand new in the box. I was like, should I make a quick buck? Should I sell it online? Mm. And I thought, nah, the chase for this item was so insane. It was like, is it coming? Is it have it? Uh, could I get it? The whole, you know, can I get it situation was just, no, nah, I don't want to sell it. You know, it was too much work. I'm like, no, no, no. Use it first. Enjoy it first. Danny said, I could break it apart and give it as gifts. Never! <laughs> it's true. And this thing, the price went up twice already. So when it first launched, it wasn't even $2,000, $1.9 or something. Then it went up a crazy price hike to 2.2K Singapore dollars. When I ordered, when I ordered, I didn't order it. I kind of like ordered it. Like I told my essay I want it. It was still 2.2K. But when it finally, no, when, the, when they had the recent price hike and it went up to 2.4K, and then my piece came. I was like, thank you. Thank you. Extra hundred over dollars. Thank you very much. <laughs> Deborah said she made her own with a guitar strap. That's interesting. Post it on Instagram. Oh my gosh. May is saying she saw one sold at 3.5K. That's crazy, you know. Oh, so expensive. Like, but you know, really, really, if you get a chance to pick it up brand new from store, please don't pick it up at a premium price. Please don't because it's already a premium priced item at LV. Just, uh, just, just wait for it to come back and stop. It's a permanent item, by the way. My essay confirmed it. She's, he said that, don't worry, it will come. Don't worry. It's kind of like the bum bag. It will come back and stop. So it's a permanent item now. And yeah, don't, don't freak out. Don't go to the secondhand market. It, it will come back in stock. And uh, yeah, don't pay premium price. But if you get it in store and you find that it's not suitable for you, sell it at a premium price. <laughs> make, some, make some money out of your heart chase, right? Oh, they usually restock. Oh, all the time. Noah's asking, when do they usually restock? All the time. Weekly. Okay, so let me tell you the, the bag that I... Which made me think about the Apple Guard. It is the Speedy Nano. I am... Oh, I want it so badly. Like, like I really... Like, my video, my recent video of lockdown... Look, Luxury, lockdown luxury lustings when I you know I'm talking about you know bags that I'm really lusting over I am really 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 eyeing the bag the nano I really really am I was ah oh. such a hard piece to get that unicorn bag it's so freaking cute Jesse has the HL version, which is in the multicolor, right, Jesse? I love your bag. Girl, don't sell it, but if you want to sell it, sell it to me. <laughs> I, I really love that bag so much. I hunted it down for a long time, but the prices are crazy online. Secondhand prices are just ridiculous. They are selling like $2,000. I will never pay that kind of price. No, I'm not that mad. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a unicorn piece. And... Um, so the Nano, the Speedy Nano, oh my gosh, this is so cute, you know. My essay actually asked me if I wanted to put a deposit for it. And he can actually get it for me already. Like, like if I put the deposit like this week, I probably will get it in a couple of weeks. Like, mm. but uh, I don't know. I'm just feeling... I don't feel like spending that kind of money at the moment, though. It's on my mind. It's on my mind. Trent got, oh, the, you really, how do you like it, Trent? How do you like the Nano? It's good, right? I think it's good. Tell me it's no good. 
May saying that the nano is so cute, but will it be hard to reach in to take stuff out? No, I don't think so. It's not like the Speedy 25 because that is a big bag. You know, you're like, but you know, it's a mini bag. So it's, it's a mini bag. You can't be putting a lot of things inside. Somebody on FB in Canada posted that they got one 45 minutes. And I went to the store. Oh my gosh, you lucky thing. Yes, Joanna, really. My essay is uh, told me. I mean, I, I've been bugging him a little bit. And then suddenly he said, well, why don't you put a deposit and we will get it. And I was like, ah. <laughs> and then I hesitated because it's, I don't know. I don't know. I just... And I don't mind buying and just, you know, spending a little bit here and there on like Sephora stuff, just a little pick me up, which, you know, I, I'm trying not to do so much, which kind of blanked out last week. But, you know, it's not such a big expense of handbag at the moment. So it's on my list. Okay, it's on my list. And it could be just, I'm just crazy about it. And the other thing that I am, I added to my list, uh, kind of like last week, but yesterday solidified it. Yesterday, after watching Amy's video, <laughs> staring at all her Chanel bags, I'm like, damn it. <laughs> this is not a good video for me to watch. I shouldn't be watching it. Me texting the essay like, I think I want to buy it. No, no, don't press it. And she takes it out. Amy takes it out and shows it again. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> It's the Chanel 19, okay? I tell you. Every time. <laughs> so I got these two bags. Huh? I'm like, oh. Pick out a handful like. Uh, who, 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 X, X, X. Do you have the Chanel 19? <laughs> in stock. I'm like, no. Don't press it. Don't press it. Don't press it. Because <laughs> she, I got, I got the essay on speed dial. I mean, not speak that like, you know, she's on my, I'm like, I can show you. It's so funny. I actually typed out the message, you know, then I was like, don't do it. <laughs> don't press it. Don't ask about it. Don't ask about it. Because <laughs> I know if I ask about it, and if she says that, yes, we have one, means I've got to buy it, right? So I'm like, Two bags, okay? Two bags after watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is all your fault. No. <laughs> Two bags. One was the Chanel 19. Because, you know, when I don't see it, I kind of like, you know, bury it, bury it deep, deep into my brain. The other bag that I, I kind of like want, but maybe not the Chanel version, uh, is a bucket bag. I had the LV Petite Noé bucket bag three or four years ago. Yeah, I think three or four years ago. And that bucket bag, uh, the Petite Noé, after using it for a week, I had some problems with it, so I returned it. But I've always loved... Oh, my battery's a bit dead. Hang on, let me just check my... Oh, I need to put the battery on. Hang on, give me a second. Okay. Uh, otherwise, ooh, otherwise we'll be talking, 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 and then the computer will shut off. Okay, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, I've always loved a bucket bag style. So after I got my Petite Noé, I actually purchased a Chanel bucket bag about yeah two years ago, but I sold that bag because one of my problems with that bucket bag it was this beautiful blue bucket bag, deer skin. But even from the first time I purchased that bucket bag, I was very concerned with the side, the handles where it tugged along the side of the leather. And I was right, because after using it for a while and it was like gorgeous, I stuffed it with lots of things. It didn't hold up so well. It was a bit, uh, you could see the leather at the tabs there were being 
pulled and it was loosening. So I sold that bag. But I've always loved bucket bags. Like I just there's something about a bucket bag that just looks so fun, so casual, so useful. Anyway, so after looking at Amy's bucket bag, I was like, <clears throat> personal shopper. <laughs> personal shopper. Check uh, the personal shopper that I personal is this personal yeah, personal shopper or reseller that I kind of follow and I kind of trust is Globe Globe. Global Closet. I think that's her name. Hang on. Her name is Sonia. Global. What's her name? Lux. Ah, Global Lux. This lady. Global Lux uh, Closet. She's based in the UK. And I've purchased two items from her before. She's pretty good, actually. She's pretty good. Anyway. Yeah. I almost texted her. I was like, can you source a bucket bag for me? <laughs> Uh, 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 no, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. No, no. Jojo, Jojo's forever. Yes, you are right. I hope Chanel moves online. They seriously need, no, no. Actually, no, we shouldn't know. We shouldn't be hoping things like that is bad for our wallets. <laughs> Amy, I'm just going to go up. Amy said that I tried the Nano. You tried the Nano. And try to fit. I tried to fit so many things inside. I can't retrieve anything. That's true because it's that shape. If you overstuff it, then obviously it's really hard to take out. Um, the opening is okay for the nano, and it fits my phone. Yep, Amy's laughing at me. Which bag? Yes, the nineteen. Yes, Amy has a beautiful collection. Ken Bryant. Hey, cat. Have you ever had a ghost encounter? Really? <laughs> um, loving the 19. Deborah, do you have the 19? I'm, oh, the gosh. Uh, <gasps> May saying, the problem with deposits, what if I change my mind by the, time, the, by the time the restock comes in? You know, that's why they make you pay a deposit. But the deposit is... It's, 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 it's because of that, right? They don't want you to change your mind. So they're making you pay the deposit first. But, you know, you can always buy it and then later return it as part of the 30-day policy, right? If you don't want it. Loving my channel. Hi, Kat. What's your most favorite bag? Ooh. That's a deep question. Let me have a moment. <laughs> my most favorite bag at the moment? Like most favorite bag. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> I'm stumped. I'm trying. Okay. Because most favorite bag could mean like I'm over analyzing your question, as I always do. <laughs> it could be like, you know very useful, so I really like it. Or maybe it just means that when I use it, even though I don't use it very often, I just feel like, oh, I love this bag so much. And I... Actually, it would have, okay? It would have been my Palm Springs mini backpack. It, it was like, it is one of my favorite bags from many aspects. It's very, very cute, which, you know, I kind of like the cute things. You know, I'm still, I'm, I'm still young enough. Okay, I'm still young enough to use cute things. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm still young. All right, still young, right? I'm saying it. As long as you say it loud enough, it's true. <laughs> and um, it's functional. Every time I use it, I feel like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's yeah, cute, adorable. It, it's a crowd. It's like ooh, people look at it, it's like, oh, it's cute. My husband says, cute. everybody who looks at the bag just thinks it's a very interesting looking piece, it's unique, and it's functional. It fits quite a lot of things. So, if I still had that bag, I have sold it um, through multiple rounds of pain. I've got, it put me through twice, twice, okay, not three times, not, not many times, twice. I decided, yeah, okay, that's it. I've sold it so that I can take the funds to buy uh, the new version because the zip with the new version 
is exposed and might be a bit better because the version that I had a lot of problems with the tabs. Though I've taken the money to buy this. <laughs> so now we are in a little bit of dilemma. But yeah, anyway. Yes, yes, yes. Clara's like, forever young, forever young. I want to be forever young. Totally. <laughs> So yeah, I paid, I took that money, which I shouldn't have to buy that multi push it. And now I am without a Palm Springs mini. So let's say bygones be bygones. Let's just say, okay, I'm closing the chapter on my Palm Springs mini backpack. That would, been, that would have been a very all rounder piece for me. So now if I look at my collection, I'm going to say something that makes me really happy. Like really just like, wow. And I'm going to say, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to sound so like I'm so snobbish. <laughs> but it's not, it's not. I'm not picking it because of that. But I'm going to pick my Birkin, my Birkin, my gold Birkin. And it's more from the sheer disbelief that I have it in my collection. Because that thing is so expensive. It's like, <laughs> and having it in my collection is just like, I, I look at it, I just scratch my head, and I can't believe I spent that kind of money on one piece, that chunk of leather. But when I, I, don't, I don't feel like, when I carry that bag, I don't feel like, oh, I'm so, I'm everything. I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> no, I don't do that. I just, I just feel so like, wow. You know, the feeling is just, it's a, it's a neutral, like, wow, can't believe I have it in my collection. I love it. I feel really happy that I have it. So I guess that is like my most favorite bag. Though I don't use it so much. I don't use it so much because I... Stupid, okay. I know, so stupid. I feel so unworthy of carrying that bag. Like, when I carry this bag, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Who cares? You know, everybody. But when I carry my Birkin, I just feel like... just don't know it's just psychological you know i just don't feel like i i'm worthy of carrying that bag like i'm not there yet i haven't made it in life to carry that kind of bag though i bought it but i have i just feel like there's so many more things that i need to achieve that i think my world like, i just need i need that like the whole do you know everything has to be perfect first before i can say yes i have a birthday nah. but now i'm like i gotta work in, I gotta work <laughs> yeah so anyway psycho Amy wants a B25. Woo. You know what, Amy, next year, your big birthday, you should absolutely buy it. Just buy it. Buy it. Because when I hit my big change of digit in my age, <laughs> which is only a year after you, or less, I think less, when that, when that digit flips over, and you never return back. <laughs> it's like, oh, shite. <laughs> it never rolls back, you know, it just keeps going, 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 going. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do something crazy. So for me, when I hit my big 4 0, you know, when Ch in Chinese, is it uh, Chinese? There's one, you know, when people ask them, what in Cantonese, they say, you oh, know, what's your age? I said, wow. <laughs> four pieces, you don't need to return any to me. So, like, no change. Four pieces, no change. So, <laughs> Chinese, it, Cantonese has such a funny, funny, funny ways of, funny ways of describing age, right? So, for me, when you say, ah, oh, I'm 40 plus, no change required. <laughs> So when I hit my big 40, oh my gosh. So many things. One of the things that I'm going to do is uh, my friend in Australia, we've been planning it. So like, yeah, we've been planning it to go for this one month girl excursion. Me and my best friend in, uh, in Australia. I've only got two. So I've only left one now, left one. So she and I were saying, okay, when we hit, because 
I am I am two days older than her. Such a coincidence. I'm two days older than her. And so we've been like, you know, we've been best buds since school. Though I haven't, you know, there comes some, some of these friends that you don't meet every day or you don't meet for years, but you know there's this real deep connection. So she's that she's that person for me. And we all by all our naughty things that we do in school. So anyway, so we're saying like, can you believe it? You're married with a kid living in Australia. Look at me. I'm living in Singapore. What happened to you, auntie? Auntie. <laughs> so we plan to go for like a holiday, a month holiday. She'll leave her kids. I'll leave my husband. And at first we were thinking of going Cuba for a month or maybe like Brazil or, you know, some European holidays. It's just like a crazy one month holiday. So that's one thing that we're going to do when I hit 40. Uh, and then on the shopping shopping end of it, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking of getting my, uh, my Rolex. I'm thinking. It, it could be the year. It could be the year. Because, like, Amy, the B25, it's impossible <laughs> to get. Like, exactly, Jesse. I'm gonna gonna kick some kiss kiss some <laughs> to get it. It's so crazy, and I refuse to play the Hermes game of buy equal amounts to get the Birkin. Like no, no, I won't do it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. You know, oozing money out from my pores. But yeah. Debbie's dilemma. Cat, promise me the pandemic will be over by your 40th. I guarantee you it will be over. <laughs> but things will change, you know, things will change. Just that uh, I had this conversation with uh, a f another friend. I said that right now, everybody is on high, like today until probably end of the year, everybody's on high alert. You know, we're wearing masks, we're washing hands, we are, you know, just absolutely on maximum protection. Give it 12 months. I can tell you we will slack off. <laughs> it's natural because mask wearing and buying hand sanitizers are actually compared to food and the shirt on your back and, you know, paying tuition, they are not essential items. They are essential now, but they're not, right? So give it 12 months. I'm telling you, people will slack off. People will have other priorities. And um, we'll just see, lah, you know? And so people will chill again. I, hope, I mean, we'll, we should continue this good habit of washing hands, at least that. But the whole mask wearing and the whole hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer and social distancing, uh, give it twelve months. I know I'm so I'm so pessimistic. I know, but I think that's reality. That's reality. What's that? What's what did you ask me, Amy? I missed it. I'm going to go up. up, up, up. Amy says, no Hermes game. Oh, which Rolex do I want to get? I honestly cannot tell you which Rolex I'm going to get because I... Uh, I don't want to do research yet. I just feel like if I do research, I'll get all obsessed about it. Uh, oh, Amy's question. Palm Springs Mini or Multi Pochette? Oh. Mm, that's tough. <laughs> ah. Okay, I'm going to say this not because I have the Multi Pochette, but I'm going to say Multi Pochette just because I feel that the, mount, that the Palm Springs Mini backpack is even more trendy than the multi pochette. It's this is trendy because you're just putting it together, but from a practical perspective, you can it you know you can split it apart and it doesn't look as 
outstanding as the mini backpack. Because when you know, when you carry the mini backpack, people will look, why you carry a small little backpack? It really looks like so cute and trendy. It The look itself is like that. And just because of that, I feel like the, the longevity of having a small downsize or, you know, honey, I shrunk my kids backpack version, that kind of longevity of that kind of design is not there compared to this because this is just a couple of pouches. They look like pouches. <laughs> That's fine. So, yeah, I, I feel like, just, yeah, just, uh, just because of the look of the two bags, from a longevity and trendy perspective, I feel like the multi pochette would be a better buy for that. The backpack, you know, give or take another 10 years, five years, people will look at you odd. <laughs> Honey, I shrunk my kids. Backpack style. So, yeah. Totally. And, and then and then when you're, you know, and I, I for me, I always, okay, I always wanted to give my backpack away to my niece because I know that once... I pass that phase, it's that I'm done. I'm done with the backpack. Just that it just didn't work out because the quality wasn't there. I had so I had I had to return it twice to LV and it really annoyed me. So if I want to buy her, I'll buy her like a cheapo backpack. <laughs> Too bad! Too bad for the niece. <laughs> Everybody's like, multi for sure, hi-fi, agree. Yeah, yeah, I I feel so, yeah. So anyway, like I said, yeah, De Debbie, Debbie, I promise you, by 40, it'll all be over, but it will be over as long as we maintain some level of good hygiene. So hopefully, even though people will give up on the hand sanitizers and, you know, mask and all, the habit of washing your hands and, you know, keeping, you know, just... Don't sneeze like hurt you out into the public. Things like that. That kind of habit, hopefully, it starts to get ingrained in people. Wash your hands and all that, you know, um, sneeze into your elbows, stuff like that. That that by itself would really help. Whereas when it comes from mask and buying additional things to protect yourself, I feel like those are really hard to sustain unless you have extra money for it. It's not cheap to maintain this kind of lifestyle, to constantly have hand sanitizers at home, to constantly be buying cleaners for the house, you know, to buy disposable masks and that you change daily or, you know, frequently. It's not, and, and if you have a big family, there's no way. You, you just can't do it. So, yeah. So I feel like that. This, this this situation's trend will die off eventually. But there are some good habits that hopefully people will take into the future. And yeah, basically it's just basic good hygiene. And yeah, and don't come to... And I'm really... I mean, I'm going to, you know, full disclosure, I'm also really guilty about this, going to work sick. And I feel like this is a very... I'm not going to... I'm not going to generalize, but I feel like it's a... It's a... Tough it out, you know, it can be in any any country. It can be in America, it can be in Asia, you just tough it out. If you're sick, you just got to get the work done. This kind of thing uh, is really bad. Like, I'm, I'm guilty of it. You know, sometimes I feel a little bit ill, but it's still not, it's not so bad that it will put me down. <laughs> like, I'll be like, oh, I can't move. I'll still go to work. I'll still go to work. No, I don't sneeze into people, but I will be sitting there with a little bit of fever. I'll be like, I gotta get this done. I gotta get this done. And I'll be so proud of myself because I beat the illness. I'm like, nah, you didn't get me. <laughs> I still went to work. I mean, so it's this, uh, yeah, it's just this thing, you know, that tough it out, get it done. But actually, it's really, really bad for the people around you because you could be passing it to them. So that's another good habit that hopefully people will take into the future that, you know, take care of yourself first because if you're not well, you will affect and impact other people. So I'm, I'm, I'm freaking guilty of this. 
unless I'm sneezing. When I have a flu, that's usually when I don't go to work because I know I'm sneezing. But when I have a little bit of a, like a low grade fever, I still do it. You know, I still like, I, I still go to work. You know, I just like, oh, come on, get it done. Doesn't matter. You just got to get it done. You're like, this. so now if I get any kind of, no, you don't be seen like a wuss. <laughs> but if I, but if I'm unwell now, I'm gonna, you know, make a conscious effort to ask the boss. You know, I say, can I work from home because I'm not feeling that great. It's hard, you know, it's a really fine balance of how do you tell your, you know, your supervisors that I think I'm not so well and I shouldn't be in the office. And then you, you know, don't, you know, is that, ah, uh, it's really, it's challenging and it's challenging. Jojo forever is saying, I don't know if it's just me, but I get worried if I don't go to work, if I only gave the sniffles. Yeah. Exactly right. It's like, uh, it's it's challenging, you know, because you don't want to be seen like, you know, I'm like a little bit like, oh, cannot, cannot, I, I cannot go to office, you know, because I got flu. <laughs> cannot, right? Cannot. But right now in this current high alert situation, you got one time, uh, five days MC, okay? <laughs> five days. Don't show your face in the office. Five days. One time. <laughs> but when all this is over and people are, you know, again, loosens, loosens up the whole situation, doesn't justify it, right? So that's this fine balance that I feel... Uh, we will have to learn, like, what's the in-between? Could it be just wear a mask? I don't know. I don't know. So, anyway, we will see. Right now, like, right now, everybody's working from home, trying to figure out how to get back to work. <laughs> That's another thing. Like, what's the level of okay to be working with people? I don't know. I, I don't know. Do you guys feel like working at home is really challenging? I... I personally find working at home very... Oh, sorry. I'm just turning the computer a bit. I'm finding working from home very challenging uh, because I get distracted very easily. I am... Uh, <laughs> I like to do things, you know? Oh, hang on. Let me just see. I'm just going to go... Yeah, before I go into that, I'm just go way off. Maybe wear a mask to work. Even you're not feel... Yeah, I hope employers wake up to this flexibility. Yeah, this... And trust. Flexibility and trust. So it's a two-way thing, you know, because there will be people who will take advantage of it. Of the whole, like, one time. <laughs> and like, <gasps> I can't work for three days. That's when it makes employers really hard to trust the employees. Therefore, they rather say, no, no, get your ass here. All right, get it here. Don't lie to me. And it impacts the other employees who are probably really ill, but because there is this whole mistrust in the situation, then you have to go to work, right? The whole like, oh, I'm not really that sick, but maybe I'm not sick enough. I'm not sick enough to warrant staying at home that they feel like they need to go to work because they don't want their employees to, employers to not trust them that they're actually sick. So they're like, all right, let's tough it out. So, so the trust is also another huge thing that we have to figure out, which is why a lot of us still go to work even though we are actually not well. Because there are the bad eggs that take advantage of this whole, well, I'm a little bit sick. I'll take five days off, <laughs> right? Ah, oh, so hard, so hard. Most importantly is the employer, Joanna saying, the most important thing is that the employers need to change their mindset towards people taking medical leave when ill. Don't penalize them for being socially responsible. Daniel is saying, the mutual trust and is mutually earned. Sometimes you have to work to be at home in bed, not working. It's, a, it's not a simple equation. It's true. It has to be earned. So I'm going to tell you a little funny story. I know we're hitting the two-hour mark, but it's a chat. We're chatting because if you, I know, if you have to go, you'll go, you know, it's really long live streams. Our live streams are super long. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree 
that trust has to be earned, has to be built and earned. So I had a staff under me a couple of years ago, and it's a really challenging thing to allow the staff to go on medical leave and because you don't want to be seen as a mean supervisor but i can tell you she was constantly going on medical leave and i knew she was like she was sick you know she has some illness but all but it got so frequent that these are cases that make me not trust whether she's really sick or not so it is a very, very difficult balance because you haven't earned it. You haven't earned the fact that, do I really know that you are at home working on the stuff that are asking you to work and you're telling me that you have a stomach ache and you're not coming to office? It got so frequent that I will be the employee employer side. I'm thinking, I gave you a lot of flexibility to work at home, but I feel, I feel, not me, I feel like you're taking advantage of my kindness. So yeah, it was really challenging in the end. It was just, it just didn't work out. So very, very hard. I tell you, very hard. There are some of that that will take advantage of the flexibility, but some of the employees do deserve the flexibility. So anyway, challenging. Lah. It's, it's going to be very interesting once all this you know, heightened situation dies down and how we're going to go back to work how we're going to have, you know, maybe a, an opportunity to work from home when we're not really sick. You know, like, how do we work from home when we are not sick enough to see a doctor, but we're not entirely well? <laughs> Clara, I love it when employees take medical leave and post art classes on Facebook on the same day. See, we'll have situations. Yeah, Joanna says it gave a leeway. Yeah, because she, this girl that I was working with, uh, she was, she had some, like, like, I don't know, some kind of like stomach problems or something like that. And some days you just, you know, we start work at nine, right? And I, I give her a lot of leave because I don't come in at nine o'clock, admitting it. But I work very late. I I I bring work home and everything. I'm I'm bad lah, huh? But yeah, so so I will come in sometimes, you know, nine, nine fifteen, nine twenty, you know, whatever. I'll be late, and <laughs> but I work. And for her, I I thought, okay, you know, I'll give you the flexibility. I don't expect you to be, but I expect you to do the work. And after a while, I noticed there was this habit of messaging me at like 8.50 in the morning or 8.55 and then suddenly say, my stomach's not feeling so good. Can I work from home? And it became a routine every week. So I was like, uh, are you really sick? You know what I mean? I, I, I really felt so guilty to even have that thought in my mind. Like, are you really sick? But she was, you know, she was sick as well. But it just got so often that, I wasn't sure whether the flexibility was making her take advantage of it. So, wow, that was really tough. I had a really tough time with that, with that, with that girl. But uh, in the end, it didn't work out because I guess it also stems from maybe a different working style. You know, we haven't learned each other's working style. There wasn't a mutual understanding. So in a bigger scheme of things, this fle work flexibility when you're sick is very, very, it's a bit touchy subject. So yeah, I one thing I one thing I asked uh, one thing I um, uh, how do you say one thing that I feel like how do employers give the staff the flexibility to not take medical leave but still work from home when they are not feeling um, so well. So one of the issues for me, right, is that when I'm ill, like I'm really, I'm sick, you know, like, but I'm not so sick enough that I need to see a doctor. Like, is I, maybe I've got a bit of, you know, like stomach upset. 
I've got a bit of the runs or, you know, like really cramping pain. But, you know, I probably like maybe I ate something not so well and I'm just like, oh, right. So I, I, maybe I just need half a day of rest at home. But then I'll probably be okay in the afternoon. The reason that I still go to work is because I don't want the hassle of crawling out of bed to see a doctor to get an MC to prove that I've got the stomach ache. Like I, that, that proof is so ridiculous. So I crawl out of bed and I force myself to go to work because I don't want that hassle. And I am actually genuinely sick. So that's like stomach ache. But what if I've got the fever? Fever with cough, but I'm thinking, well, do you want to drive out right now? Line up in a clinic for another two, three hours, really green in my face, just to get that dang piece of paper to prove that I'm sick so that I can take a day off. Oh. So that is another issue, you know, that that I struggle with as a as a staff, which is why I still go to work when I'm sick. Uh, did I, Ying Ying asked, did I let go that staff or she resigned? Mm. Eventually, she resigned. Uh, you know, we had many, many rounds of discussions and it's just um, not a work that was suitable for her. So we, yeah, she, yeah, she, she kind of resigned. <laughs> Yeah, Clara, I agree. See, that there should be proof. The Getting the proof should not be there. There should be some balance in between, like maybe like a written declaration from me to say that I really say a statutory declaration, like, dude, I am sick. I'm not lying to you. If I'm caught lying, you know, you can fire me. You know, maybe a statu like a declaration that doesn't require me to go to the clinic and just for that piece of paper because that is the pros and cons to that piece of paper. Yeah, you catch the people who are lying, but at the same time, there's a cost to the company because I'm going to claim that, I'm going to put in a claim for that cost. Secondly, it's it, the downside is that because I don't want to do that, I'm going to come into the office, I'm going to infect everybody. So, uh, very challenging, very challenging. They'll have to think about this kind of stuff in the future. Debbie is saying, I have Crohn's disease and this happened to me. I ended up going to the hospital and was on and off three years. And oh my goodness, are you better? Debbie, are you better? See, Blue Mini 2525. I am in the US. My work requires a doctor's note and it says that I am incapacitated in order for them to approve it. Right. How, you know, how, how is it that you're incapacitated, but you're still at a doctor's, <laughs> doctor's clinic? You, you like how you pulled there? <laughs> so, so ridiculous, right? This whole doctor's note thing, they need to figure out the fine balance in it. Uh, you know, with technology, maybe we could do online tele, online proof. Like, you know, we do a Zoom with a doctor and say that doctor, can you please write me a note because... Dang, you can see I'm green in my face. Seriously, that would be awesome. You know, awesome. So doctor can virtually approve my MC. That's good enough for me to drive out of the house green in my face. Sit in the doctor's office with 20 other people who are maybe more green in the face than me. Get more green stuff just to get that piece of paper. Hopefully, that'll be the future. <laughs> me like it here's my doctor's note when i'm sick <laughs> you just have that there you know it's the it's the 90 percent of society that is truthful it's the 10 percent that makes it challenging for the 90 percent the 10 percent that will say i'm sick which causes us decent humans to find it so difficult to implement um, safe working arrangements for our colleagues. That's how I feel, right? And I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> A 
Athea, Athea Pan is saying, Singapore has an e-doctor consultation online. That's good. I, I, I've never used it. And it really depends whether the companies accept e-doctor consultations. Hopefully, after all this situation, is, it, will become a, it will become a thing. But yeah. Whoa, we hit the two hour, 10 minute mark. <laughs> it's late for a lot of people. <sighs> so anyway, what did I say? Oh, so I did complete my task. I told you guys that I bought a lot of things unnecessarily online. A lot, kind of like a lot. And then I've got a few things on my mind, like bucket bags. Oh my gosh, I need a bucket bag. I need Amy's bucket bag. That Chanel bucket bag is gorgeous. It, it, the first time I saw it, I was like, yeah, it's okay. But it's, it's growing on me and it's slowly, slowly growing on me. I think it's, it's nice. Do I have anything else on my wish list? Uh, nothing at the moment. Not, well, nothing at the moment. Nothing more at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, I think that'll be... That, They'll do, babe. They'll do. <laughs> Debbie said, my husband's staff is giving him problems now out of fear. It's a nightmare. Oh, I know. Jeanette Fong says, in Singapore, my employer also gives us X number of days of MC without cert required. <gasps> That's awesome. That's awesome. That is progress. <laughs> it's hard to find employers that do that. I know some, there is one company I know that does it, but I'm, I'm not sure how they implement it. But that's, that's really interesting. Trans saying, Jerusha got it. I saw it the other day. I, yeah, I think, she, I think she has it. There's another Lux YouTuber, um, Melanie. Lux Purse Love. I think she has that bucket bag as well. Oh wait, does she? Was it? Oh, was it Carrie's? Somebody has. There are a few YouTubers that have that bucket bag. Uh, and his hair is kind of growing on me. Kind of growing on me. <laughs> on top of the Chanel nineteen, I like need to look another bag. <laughs> Jesslyn says, my company also, take MC, no need to produce MC. See, pick it. We really pray that people don't take advantage of it, but yeah. Ah, okay, yeah, Carrie's has the red one. What, really? Amy's saying, Lux per Melanie from Lux Purse Love sold hers. Oh, really? Hmm, Carrie's has the red one, yep. Just in saying, my boss finds it hard and troublesome to ask and keep track of MCs. Yeah, see. Wow. Jojo says, we have three days without MC. Actually, you know what? Three days is, it's not a lot, but it's actually, you know, in the whole year, how often do you fall sick? I mean, for me, I'm, as, as, I mean, I'm, okay, okay, I shouldn't say that. I mean, people who, who are naturally a lower immune system obviously will fall sick more often. But for most people, if you're generally young, healthy, and fit, you know, you shouldn't be falling sick so often. If you are, you should be seeing the doctor. You should be finding out why you're sick. Are you not taking your vitamins? Are you eating fried food and chips at 3 a.m. in the morning? <laughs> are you doing things like that? You're like, we got to check your lifestyle. So if you're falling sick too often, there's probably something that's causing it. But, you know, in the whole year, I think like last year, I only fell sick like twice. Um, two, I mean, twice, like really sick. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about the little six, but I'm not talking about really sick that put me out, like lost my voice. I'm just, you know, fever and everything, but you really need to see a doctor. I think I fought twice, maybe twice. Yeah. But there were other times that I went to the office not feeling so great. And I can tell you maybe two or three times as well. So three days of MC, three days of MC without MC would be so helpful for that. So helpful. It's enough, but not too much, you know?
May, my doctor's MC has to be signed by my boss. That's ridiculous. Like, why this additional step? Seriously. Rebecca, when I was working as a children's librarian, I get sick all the time. They are germ machines. <laughs> you know, that's really true. Like how they said that in this situation, kids are carriers. Gosh, they are, they're, they're like... They're like germ bags, right? <laughs> They're like, ooh, let's get all the germs. But that's because that they need it. They need the 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 germs and bacteria and everything so that they are they can build the immunity to it. But we get it from them. <laughs> We're like, ah, stay away from me. You're a germ machine. <laughs> Jocelyn, Jocelyn says. We have 30 days of MC in a year. <laughs> That's crazy. What? 30 days? 30 days is like a month and a half, right? If you take away the weekends. Like, oh my gosh, that's a lot. I think my office is... For me, I think I've got like... Uh, 14 days of MC? I mean, we have hospitalization, but 30 days is a lot. Like, who's working? I'm sick. <laughs> One time. I'm sick. I'm sick. And I've got 30 days again. Okay? I've got 30 days. But yeah, 30 days and going to the clinic 30 times. Not my cup of tea. Oh. Wow. Oh, oh. I think so. Huh? Banks do be banks do give uh, quite a lot of d days off for MC. It's a very high stressful essential business. <laughs> well, actually, it is because uh, some of our clients are banks, and a lot of the work that we do are like yesterday. I was up till what time was I up till two, three o'clock in the night because uh, there was some thing that we were doing for the for a bank and things that you're constantly working. So it's, yeah, probably they calculated like, mm, our people tend to fall sick a little bit more. Give them more MC. <laughs> Not everybody utilizes it though. Like it's too much of a hassle. Minghui is asking where this necklace from? Oh, this is from the old days, this brand called Bubble Bar. I don't know if you've heard this company called Bubble Bar. They were really popular even before all this Anna Luisa, Majuri, like a long time ago. Um, I think the, probably like the first type of jewelry accessible online where a lot of YouTubers were talking about bubble bar this, bubble bar that, bubble bar this. And I got a few pieces from bubble bar. But, um, and you know what? Honestly, really good quality i'm not talk i don't know about now but when i bought this bubble bar necklace um i've, I've used it I, sw I sleep with it i shower with it and it has held up really well now i don't know now i haven't you know nobody talks about bubble bar anymore no youtuber i think they're not giving enough commission to them <laughs> but uh they, they're still around fashionably amy i never take six days maybe once or twice a year and i got really sick i felt bad that i was sick i showed up i was limping my body <laughs> amy high five right you gotta prove that you're incapacitated you're like i really i really sick and the doctor's the boss is like what are you doing here as long as she doesn't shout or he doesn't shout what are you doing here then you're not really sick <laughs> you're like go home Okay, now I will go home. <laughs> you crawl back out to your house. <laughs> ah, really la, funny. So it's, it's up here, you know. But I, actually, I don't know. I don't know why are we like that. That we have to be incapacitated <laughs> before we say, I'm actually not feeling well. <laughs> oh, we have to prove it. We're like, <laughs> green in the face. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, Amy, do you find it? Uh, she's talking to you. Amy, do you find it also hard for you to recover exposed to rent? Yeah, I think, right? You know, if you're forcing yourself to, to buck up, you're actually using more energy, more everything, so that you are exerting energy to do something where actually you need to be resting, which is actually like this situation, right? So apparently what I've been reading, I don't know, there's so many, so many things about it. Like some say don't have lots of bed rest. Some say have some bed rest, but still be active because, you know, you don't want to be totally incapacitated, like sitting there getting the virus like attacking you. So I don't know what is right. So I'm not going to say, but I feel like when I'm sick, like when I am sick, like with a fe with a high fever, um, which has been a long time, touch wood, uh, high fever and all that, I, I feel really weak. You know, I feel like I just want to lie down and just sleep the whole day. But I noticed that if I do that, if I just lie down and just, just rest and rest and rest, I actually feel like it takes a little bit longer to recover. So... It's important that when even when uh, for me lah, when I'm having high fever and just really super down, it's important to just get up a little once in a while because you know you just want to sleep. But to get up a little bit, you know, just take a shower, uh, move a little bit, have a, some drink of water, just move, you know, stretch out a bit and then go back and rest. Not just lie down there and sleep for 24 hours because actually, even if you're healthy and you sleep for 24 hours, you actually feel really shitty. Right? You feel like everything's just like extra weak. So, hmm. <sighs> yeah, Amy's, you're right. It's impossible to recover when you're really sick. Like, you have to be home when you're really sick. Ay, interesting. Lah. I hope, well, well, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Once this whole situation, like, I'm so sick of it. I, I don't know about you guys. I am so sick of it. I've had it. We need to, I need a new routine. <laughs> I won't say like my life before this situation was very interesting. You know, I was just doing work, gym, occasionally going to Ion Orchard to check out bags, taking a flight home, see my mom, see my dad. You know, it was like, a, it was that, you know, cycle of a routine. But, this new routine, I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of it. Is wake up, walk a few steps to my dining table, <laughs> turn on the laptop, start to work, go to the kitchen, few steps away, turn on the hot water, make a cup of coffee, walk a few steps back to the dining table, start working. Evening, go to the kitchen a few steps away, <laughs> start to cook. Come back to the dining table, a few steps away, eat dinner, play the computer, and then by the time I'm bed, take a few steps to the bedroom and go to sleep. And we repeat, repeat, repeat. I'm so sick of it. <laughs> ah. Oh my gosh. I feel like, I don't know. I It's so, it's, it's so like, it's so long. I know. It's so long. But but we need it. I know. I know. We need it. We need it. We need to be in this routine until it's all died down or as much as it can die down. But it takes a lot. You know, it takes a lot. It's just being, you know, I'm really blessed to have such a beautiful place to, you know, building this rented, but this beautiful place to be. You know, I've got big TV, got a balcony and all that. But it's just, you know, being in the same space. My whole exciting day, you know, my, my, the biggest part of my exciting day is to go grocery shopping. And I mean it. You know, I really mean it. I know it was like a joke, but I really feel like, oh my God, it's so exciting. Ooh, what is this hand cream at NTUC? Oh my gosh, it's so boring. Like, I'm looking forward to, like, after this live stream, I'm going to, like, wash up a little bit, and then we're going to go to NTUC, fair price. <laughs> and just, oh, and just look at things, you know? And I painted my nails as well. This is like, it looks orange, huh? It's not orange. It's like Dawes Corn Orange, <laughs> Singapore, but it's not, it's reddish. 
Looks a little orange, huh? Hmm. Okay, no, it's red. Jess, Jess is saying, I saw an auntie yesterday taking off her mask to eat ice cream. Mm. That's challenging, you know, because you're eating ice cream, right? Milaki2 says, I hate to be around sick people. If you're sick, sick stay at home. Uh, yeah, I know. Gisely, too, more traffic now, so people are out. My neighbors are taking walks without masks. Another neighbor are, neighbor are having a few people over. I've never seen them wear a mask and since all this started. You know, yeah. I, you know, I, in normal cases, I feel like, you know, you do you, you know, kind of like whatever, you do you. But now, we all, like, we all want it to be over. And the, the more people who fight back against just the little changes in life, the longer this thing is going to be prolonged. You know, if we just sit still and do that little bit of thing, just the inconvenience of now, it will end faster. But the longer we do the opposite, the longer this thing is going to be, you know, it's like a slow cut rather than just rip off that, you know, you know it's just, yeah, it's, yeah, the thing is I, exactly. And like in Singapore right now, it's mandatory to wear a mask outside. So it's, it's hard. Joanna, okay, bye, bye. Yeah, I'm going to cook lunch. I'm going to, it's already two. <laughs> this is my longest live stream, two and a half hours. I'm going to stay on for another maybe five minutes, 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes and then we'll call it a day. We'll call it a day. <laughs> it's time to cook, 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 cook. Because it's lunchtime here. Geeks I'm a nurse and my husband is a doctor. We get really angry. I'm sure because you're, you're right in front of it, right? And I, I think when it first started, you know, I'm, I'm just going to admit this. When it first started, when talking, I'm talking like January, okay? Now we're like almost May. I'm talking January. Even for me, I didn't take it really seriously. I was like, hmm, is it really so bad? You know, that kind of feeling like, is it so bad that we all have to wear masks now? And that was January, okay? And, and then... Once it started to pick up towards the end of January, maybe early Feb, then that's when I started to feel like, okay, not so much for me. Like if I get sick, like whatever, but I was getting worried about my parents. So that's the important thing. You know, people maybe don't think it's not so much about you. It's the people around you. So I was like, telling. I was starting to tell my mom like, I don't think you should be going to church. Like, don't, maybe don't go, lah, huh? You know, it, it's a little bit, you know, it starts a little bit, a little bit. So I was like, I think don't go to church, huh, mommy? Uh, for now, because it's a bit risky, because you don't know. So it, it, it was more of that, and then it slowly picked up. And right now, it's like, don't do anything. Stay at home. <laughs> Just stay at home. But uh, yeah, it, it took a it took like a month before it really hit. But hello, it's since January until now, people are still not getting it. Like dudes, stay at home, okay? Maybe at the start, like at the start, you can be still like unsure of the situation, have your friends over. But it's been four months. You should be at a point whereby you're saying, okay, we want this over with it. Just stay at home, wear your mask if you need to go out. Uh, like, like I, well, I'm going out later. I'm gonna go to NTUC, but I'm gonna be masked up, you know, masked up when I come home with my groceries. I'm gonna be washing my hands, you know. If, if there's some auntie that's sneezing at me, I'll be like, Ooh, don't come near me, auntie. <laughs> but yeah, but well, I think Singapore's not so bad, you know. Singapore actually, people are quite, um, I would say most are quite discipline uh it took a while though it took a while because they, they didn't do a full lockdown it, singapore was doing the step 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 little step little step little step little step 
So it's a more uh, extended lockdown, but uh, yeah, you know, we do, you know, Singapore do, do Singapore, do Singapore, do Singapore. <laughs> but, you know, starting to go out now without a mask and, uh, you know, having people over, it's just, I don't know. You know, I don't know if me like me likey too is still here. Uh, who was it? Uh, what was it? Was it you, babe, or or she? The posh said this really funny thing about how she feels it's really rude and feels it's really weird that we all wear masks because we all we all think that other people got the cooties, <laughs> you know, like or like oh, you're so dirty. You you're the germ. You're the germ. So in that mindset, it's like. I'm not wearing a mask because, you know, I'm wearing a mask because I'm afraid you will infect me, right? It's that thinking. But, you know, we have to kind of like change the mindset a little bit, change that mindset to be not so much of an I, like, oh my gosh, you will infect me. No, no, no. We should be wearing the mask in a different mindset. We should be wearing it to say that maybe I am the one who is sick. Maybe I um could be a carrier for something so instead of thinking you will infect me i'm wearing it so that i will protect you and i'm wearing it so that if i'm protecting you i'm also protecting my parents my friends and also we just have to change the mindset of doing things not so much of you are germ you are germ you 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 is you no it's all of you people you you wear the mask you feel like as if you're the great one but if we change the mindset of why we are washing our hands why we are wearing masks why we are you know taking the extra step is because we want to protect others from getting it so i don't know maybe i think it was she the posh babe i think she was the she, she, she said she feels like Wearing mask is rude because it just feels like, oh, I'm, you know, it, it, you have that mindset of I'm wearing the mask because you will give it to me. But um, if you change the mindset that if everybody wears a mask um, because we are thinking that, well, what if we have it? What if I had it? Like I, I got it from something, maybe from a dog or a cat or something. And I, I have something that. Now, I don't want to infect you. I'm being the better person in a way. And because I want to protect my family, I want to protect my friends. So it's not that I think you have the virus or you have something that I don't want to catch, but I am actually, maybe I could be having it and I want to protect you from getting it. So that mindset is really hard. It's like, I'm also great, but yeah. Think that way, everybody will wear a mask. In Canada, we have to wear a mask now if you're going on the plane starting Monday. Oh, that's good. That is very good. Serena says, I'm not surprised if the circuit breaker in Singapore gets extended. In Malaysia, it's, it's been extended twice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think Singapore's circuit breaker will get extended. Maybe for a week, maybe for two weeks. We'll see. Because yesterday, for... The world news by cat. <laughs> Singapore's um, numbers yesterday, of course, we shouldn't be looking at all the numbers, but anyway, Singapore's numbers yesterday was 940 infections. So, yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> that was like the record number yesterday at Singapore. Out of the 940 um, only, I think less than 20 was low, like non uh, other people, like normal people like me and me and you. But the rest came from the foreign worker dormitories. So Singapore had a sudden spike in cases since a couple of weeks ago because of small clusters of infections at foreign worker dormitory. So a lot of the workers who come from overseas, like from uh, Nepal, Bangladesh, India, you know, they, a lot of these workers that work in Singapore, you know, to build the roads, to build the buildings, they live in dorms. You know, they, they have like special dorms that they, they house them in and, you know, they pay very low rent so they can, you know, they can live here and work here. 
But these conditions are, I, I, what I understand is they're not like, they're not like a big flat, you know, they're probably like little rooms or little sections off in the dorm. This is a dorm, you know, you, if you've been to a dorm, like in your school, you, you know what I mean? It's that kind of situation. So they had clusters of infections in these dorms. Some of them were like, maybe a few here, a few there. And because the living conditions are very close, the, you know, the quarters are probably very connected. And so, and they had to quarantine off several dorms, dormitories. Some of the dorms had 13,000 people. Some of them had 8,000 people. Some had 4,000. Some had 10,000. So they quarantined off the dormitories. And that's where there was this huge spike in infections. Because, yeah, hard. Trying to say, I wore a mask when I went out the other day and people walked past and people are saying, oh, that person must be sick. <laughs> I stopped it. Yeah, because, you know, that was the, that was the marketing spill when this whole situation started. In January, I feel like they should have... So, you know, if touch wood, but most likely it will happen when this happens again in the future, and I'm sure it will, you know, there will be some situation like that. It's, it's just, that's life. The, the story, the, the line that was going around in January was this, wear a mask only if you are sick. It was, yeah, it was, if you're not sick, you don't have to wear a mask. This was what was told to everyone, the world, wear a mask only if you're sick. So people like me, I thought, oh, okay, I'm not sick. I won't wear a mask. So when you look, when, therefore, when your eyes look at the people who wear a mask, you'll be like, she's sick. You got a virus. You're sick. You're sick. You're sick. And you, you start off with that story. And you start off with that mindset. You get people to think that way. And now you're trying to change people to think differently. It's really challenging, right? It's really challenging. Now you're trying to change the whole uh, story to be, you could be sick, so you should wear a mask. But you, you started off wrong, you know. You should have told everybody, everyone just wear a mask because you don't know if you're sick. That should have been the byline in January, really. It should have been the case, and we wouldn't we wouldn't be where we are today. I know, and Amy, you're right. I don't care if people think I'm wearing a mask because I'm protecting myself and my family. How cute the fabric mask! Anyway, are you gonna make one? Is anybody making the mask? Like, uh, I saw Cassie Thorpe. Um, was it Cassie Thorpe? She made like the like the mask with the luxury bag i don't know we'll, ooh, we'll see i don't know if i'm gonna cut my bag and i'm not that good at sewing but you know maybe i will just for the heck of it like a chanel <laughs> yeah uh you know cdc screwed up uh who screwed up they totally screwed up with this storyline if they just told everyone to wear a mask it doesn't matter if you've done the whole mandatory shit we wouldn't be here today seriously i'm gonna I, I feel like this is definitely a blame situation, but like Singapore now, because people were feeling like, oh, I don't need to wear a mask if I'm not sick. So you're like, I'm not really sick. I don't want to wear a mask. So then you'll be always looking at other people very much. You're like, you're sick, you're sick, you're sick, you're sick, you're sick, you're sick. You know, you're always like, you, you shouldn't be out. You know, you become, you become the, that nasty Nancy person. But what they did in Singapore now is like, I don't care if you're sick or not sick. It's mandatory to wear a mask. So now I'm like, okay, I'll wear my mask. Whether or not I'm sick. And, and you will never get judged by other people. You, nobody's going to look at you and say that she could be sick. Maybe she's not sick. No, th there's no judgment anymore. Just, just everybody just wear it because government says wear it. So everybody said, okay, I could be sick. I could not be sick. Anything. We're just wearing it because government said so. <laughs> and that should have been the byline. That should have been the story in January. Make it bloody mandatory. Distribute it. Reusable masks in January and we wouldn't be here today. Me like you to say, I bought one that was made out of an LV towel. 
I have been having, Rebecca has been having so much fun sewing masks for my son and I. Oh my God, so cute. Annie is, Annie is saying now, because now the asymmetric, asymptomatic peoples are the one endangering the vulnerable and they don't know it they don't know it because there are so many mild cases so seriously ah oh, that was the that was our you know if there are you know many you know a year down from this when they do like the whole project implementation kind of situation in you know, the analysis of lessons learned from this that is number one that is the biggest lesson don't tell the wrong story just err on the side of caution cautions caution and go the extreme tell everybody wear a mask if you're not wearing a mask you're not allowed out of house that everybody will naturally either make mask don't go out you know just do that and really ah so anyway they did yeah but yeah uh you know the reusable mask that the Singapore government was distributing? I'll show you. Let's see it's there. This, this thing. <laughs> ah, this thing they gave. So Singapore, everybody, every household was distributed some reusable mask. It's just, it's just um, you know, it's the kind of cloth that I would use to like a sponge <laughs> i don't know uh it's the kind of thing that i would maybe when i buy my computer they'll be like you know on on certain buttons or something so it's not the most comfortable and it's really hot <laughs> it's like hot it's it's so uncomfortable but better be uncomfortable right anyway i have like the disposable ones just that I have to admit, it's not that comfortable. So we should be making our comfy mask, you know, like like this. If this was a mask, that would be kind of cute. See? I've got watermelons and strawberries. Oh, my God, that's so cute. Ah, neoprene. Yeah, this material is like that. It's hot. You know, the other day I was wearing it. I was wearing it out. I was sweating, okay? <laughs> I was sweating around here. I was like, there is no... There's no ventilation in this piece of cloth. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, it's too hot. The moment I was out of sight, I was out of sight from people. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't breathe. I'm dying. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> oh my god, I'm dying. Because <laughs> it was, it's so, it's so hot. I have to admit, it's so hot. But. Never mind. It was okay. It was just a grocery run, like a really quick one. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I can imagine why people will make their own mask. Like make your own mask. Get some really nice silk material or some 100% cotton that is comfortable and make your own because these <laughs> neoprene, it's so hot. Oh God. It's like, it's going to give me acne, <laughs> pimples and blackheads. <laughs> can see you know, it's like a sponge it's, 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 it's oh gosh and tight and tight it's like <laughs> it's so tight you can you can you can see it's like pulling slightly pulling my ears like oh jeez oh, but anyway better than nothing right better than nothing Amy saying, I won't mind this if it's 30 degrees. Okay, yeah. If this was, you know, given to people who are in like cold countries, this is absolutely fine. This is like winter. This is like winter wear kind of stuff, you know, where you wear it and you're like, ooh, warm and hot, keeping all the moisture in. But not in this weather. This is like, you wear like, mm -hmm. it's kind of warm, huh? It's not really breathable material, huh? You're trying to breathe. <laughs> you're trying to buy things you're like oh, okay no this doesn't work so i can imagine justin why the auntie took it off while eating her ice cream she's probably trying to take a break from the sweat <laughs> it's hot now <laughs> because of that mask <laughs> all right people i'm gonna end it here thank you so much we hit two hours and 45 minutes that's a lot of chat it's fun it's fun it's fun it's fun it's fun, it's fun. 
if you are joining um wednesday's live chat so live uh when on wednesday i did i usually do happy hour wednesday so on wednesday last wednesday i totally forgot to to talk about what food we're gonna eat usually we had a theme right so we did japanese we've done korean then we've done italian pizza i think we'll just stick to pizza again this coming wednesday wine and pizza because i still have some wine <laughs> so we'll do Italian again on Wednesday. So that's going to be at six o'clock um, happy hour live stream. So I know some of you can join. Some of you know, but it's okay. You know, I I did put a lot of my live stream uh, live streams on a public domain um, just because I guess there are a lot of PNC stuff that I talk about, you know, like, not PNC, but really private stuff. So people who have been asking me like, oh, where's your live stream? I will send the link to them. But otherwise, just for the last couple of live streams, I put it on an unlisted link. Uh, yeah, just just because. So today I'll decide, you know, I'll watch it again and I'll decide because, you know, we talk about some sensitive issues and, you know, it might be a bit challenging for me to put that out there. For everyone who watches, then obviously it's okay. But yeah, otherwise, I'm going to keep it a little PNC, huh? Anyway, um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you for joining me today. It was really fun. It was talking about shopping, talking about nonsense, talking about face masks, and uh, talking about MCs. and <laughs> just, just random chats, right? It's awesome. So yeah, I will see you all on Wednesday, if not same time next Sunday, so twice a week, right? Thank you for joining me. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.